Sifiwe. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to thank God for this great accomplishment that the Lord has helped this church to do. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, according to scripture, you notice that God commanded the children of Israel that any time he gives them a major phenomenal victory, they were to have a memorial. Yes. To celebrate around that memorial, remind them that it's the Lord who has brought them thus far. Yes. This is our Ebenezer. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. So as I open this, just want to thank God and trust him to give us a wonderful time here as we officially uh, we will read this place and dedicate it to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, in that, in that capacity, I want to... First of uh, January, the year of the Lord 2021. It's my honor and pleasure to open this house of the Lord in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Karibuni, Karibuni, Karibuni. All pastors of the coastal presbytery, please, you'd sit behind the presbyter, Apo, and then the elders. Then from the elders, then we come, all of us behind him. Karibuni, Karibuni, Karibuni. Karibuni, Karibuni. Waimbaji itafadalini pandeni kwenye jukwa. Then we shall start by prayer, a little prayer. Karibuni, Karibuni. Sing us, please, come. Before I open with prayer, Musi Musi me paga ni ni fungu eba omi. Dali e ukonje ingi enda ni sasa. Ukumbi hu me fungu liwa rasmi na baba tu na mama. Wewe kari boni na mjiski nyumbani. Na penda kujita muri shapo ni kabla. Praise kwa kujiondoa katika nia ambazo labda tumeingia nazo tuko ulimwenguni wapendwa na kila mmoja amekuja na hali zake lakini Mungu ni mwema kwa sababu haangalii ile shida uko nayo anaangalia ile motive uko nayo Bwana Yesu asifiwe motive ni nia kuna mahali katika Biblia sura ya moja ya ya Zaburi mstari wa inasema kwamba ingieni malangoni pake kwa kusifu na kushukuru. Amen. Manake nini? Unapoingia mahali ambapo Mungu anatukuzwa, Mungu hataki kuangalia lini, anataka kuangalia kama unamsifu na kumshukuru. Alafu Zaburi moja na msini, mstari wa sita inamalizia kusema kila mwenye pumzi amsifu Bwana. Hallelujah. Amen. As long as you can breathe in and out. God doesn't care about what circumstances you are surrounded with. Lakini ukimsifu Mungu na hiyo pumzi uko nayo anapokea sifa yako. Haleluya. Oh, Lord, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. 
Amen. Hallelujah. To not bat your shambles, not see what's also. Amen. Where have you been for more than a day? Come on, everybody.
isso Porque assim nós vamos te amar Porque assim nós vamos te roubar Porque assim nós vamos te amar Ora sair, ora sair, irmã Acuna mãe que nega a mão eu Tira a cua por baixo Hey Acu
Thank you, Almighty Father. Thank you, O God. Wonderful. Tuko katika mahali pazuri sana. Tunazidi kubarikiwa na yote hayo ni kwa ajili ya wema wa Mungu. Bwana asifiwe. Haleluya. Pengine ningependa nijitambulishe kwanza kwa majina anaitwa Simon Charo. I share name with my father here, Pastor Adu. Kwa hivyo karibuni tena. Kwa hivyo naomba nichukue wakati huu kwa nyenyekevu ni mwalike elda mwashako kwa ajili ya kuombea matoleo na anapokuja napenda nipeane mwelekeo ili tukue na, na smooth flow na ningeomba kwamba kila mmoja hakikisha your mask is on the right place as we come forward to give to our lord kwa hivyo tutaanzia sehemu hii mahali presbyter wetu ameka alafu tutaenda sehemu hii mahali ha excellency the deputy governor ameka kwa hivyo tutaanzia hii sehemu then and this sehemu hizi sehemu za mwisho mtakuja baada ya hizi sehemu mbili kutoa amen mungu awabariki karibu ela amen tusimame tu ili tuweze kuomba kwa ajili ya sadaka Baba Mwenyezi Mungu tunakushukuru Bwana vile umetuweka kwa nyumba yako ewe Bwana. Na wakati mzuri Jehova ambao umetupa ili tuweze kukupe tuku, kweza kukutolea asubuhi ya leo ewe mfalme. Tukushukuru kwa kipindi cha sifa na ibada ewe Bwana. Natazama tena tuko mbele yako tutataka kukuabudu na matoleo yetu ewe Bwana. Tazama umetubariki kwa njia mbalimbali mbali, ewe Bwana na wakati tunakurudishia tu sehemu ya ile ambayo umetupa ili uweze kutubariki na zaidi ewe mfalme na kwa ishara hiyo Bwana tunaomba Jehova kulingana na, na neno lako ewe Bwana fungua milango Bwana na madirisha uweze kumiminia watoto wako baraka hata Bwana wasiwe na pahali pa kuweka ewe mfalme kwa ajili ya ishara ya kukutolea ewe Bwana na pia uweze kukemea hata mwaribifu yule huja na kula mazao yetu galani bwana kwa ajili bwana ya ume, ume, watu wako wamekosa kukutolea ewe bwana na kushukuru kwa kila mmoja wetu ambao umemtayarisha kwa sehemu ile ambayo nataka kutoa bwana ambapo wakati anakuja kutoa tunamkabidhi mbele zako bwana uweze kubariki na sadaka zote ambazo zitatolewa bwana wacha zitumike katika kazi yako na katika jina la Yesu Kristo nimeomba Thank you so much elder. Naomba nitoe mwelekezo tena. Iwapo ungependa kutoa sadaka zako au matoleo yako kwa njia ya Mpesa, tafadhali kuna maandishi atakuwa amewekwa pale na nitaeleza tuko na paybill business number 824884 account number utaandika jina yako moja alafu pia utaandika offering au tithe amen the information is on the screen so praise and worship team tafadhali karibuni mtupatie praise song moja tunapomtolea bwana naomba sote tusimame tunapomsifu bwana katika matoleo amen Mungu yumema 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 
Sifiwe, Bwana sifiwe, Bwana sifiwe. Hakika Mungu yumwema wapendwa ni wakati mzuri. Naomba tupate kuingia katika kipiti chengine. Na kwa wakati huu ningeomba tu kwa ajili ya kumheshimu Mungu. Bwana asifiwe. Kwa ajili ya kumheshimu Mungu sote tafadhali ningeombeni tusimame kwa miguu yetu miwili. Tusimame sote, tusimame sote kwa ajili ya kumheshimu Bwana. Na nataka nichukue fursa hii kwa nyenyekevu ni mwalike elda wetu elda Donald Bongosa aje achukue mkutano kufikia hapo. Karibu sana bo. Tutakupenda sana tumpigie bwana makofi kwa ajili yake Mungu. Amen. Amen. Karibu bo. Haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu kaso. Haleluya, nashukuru Mungu kwa wakati mzuri. Mungu yuko hapa. Mimi nimekuja tu kama Yohana Mbatizaji, nimekuja tu kunyosha njia. Haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Naomba tu tukae tumesema kwamba tunataka tumkaribishe Pastor Odu ambaye ni mchungaji wa kanisa hili atuelepatie mwelekeo. Naomba tupige bwana makofi anapokuja mtumishi wa Mungu. Karibu pasta uongoze mtumishi wako. Haleluya. Amen. 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 Mungu awabariki sana na wasalimu nyote kwa jina la Yesu. Naomba mkae wapenzi. Mungu ni mwema sana. Siku hii ni siku kubwa sana hasa kwa taita nzima kwa ajili ya altar hii ambayo Mungu ameileta hapa leo. Amen. Kwa hivyo kwa heshima kubwa 
ama kwa unyenyekevu mkubwa ningependa kuwajulisha wale ambao ni mara yao kwanza kuingia hapa kujua kwamba mimi kwa jina naitwa Simon Wadu ndiye mchungaji wa kanisa hili kwa neema ya Mungu amen karibuni sana mjisikie nyumbani na kabla sijaongea mengi ningependa kutambua uwepo wa mtu mmoja kati yetu hapa ambaye ni maalumu sana katika maisha yangu na mtu huyo nilipewa na Mungu kabla ya kuumbwa misingi ya ulimwengu naomba mnisikize kwa makini hebu fikiri hilo jambo <laughs> huyo mtu nilipewa na Mungu hata kabla baba yangu na mama yangu hawajaoana amen na Mungu alimchagua katika ulimwengu wa roho akamweka kuwa wangu na amekuwa baraka kwa miaka mingi na mtu huyo si mwingine bali ni mke wangu Ema? Bwana Yesu asifiwe Katika katika ulimwengu tuna msemo ambao tunasema kwamba behind every successful man there is a woman amen lakini mimi nimeubadilisha kwa sababu zangu mwenyewe kama utakubaliana mimi unaweza kutwenda na wewe pamoja tu huwa nasema besides semeni besides every successful husband there is a wife bwana yesu asifiwe so because any man can be followed by any woman amen but not necessarily kwa every husband who are followed by every wife amen karibu sana pastor helen salim ya lafundele bwana asifiwe kanisa bwana asifiwe tena mtu mwenyewe ndio huyo <laughs> haleluya <laughs> amen ambaye mimi ni msaidizi wake haleluya kwa hivyo napenda kumshukuru Mungu sana kwa siku hii ya leo tulikuwa tunaiombea Bwana amefanya mambo makuu kwetu ambao macho hayakuona mambo hayakuingia katika mioyo yetu masikio yetu hayakusikia lakini ilifikia wakati wa Mungu na tukashuhudia ushindi wa Bwana kwa hivyo tuko na furaha kubwa kubwa sana kupata madhabahu haya Nilikuwa nasema kwa moyo wangu eh nitazeeka kabla kumtumikia Mungu kumjengea nyumba ya kuabudia lakini kwa sababu Mungu ni Mungu wa mipango na kanuni zake hatuwezi kuzibadilisha wakati wa Mungu ndio huu sasa ambao umefika wazazi wangu wa kiroho mamangu na dadi wangu nasikia tu kumtukuza Mungu hawa ndio wamenikuza kiroho tukianzia chini tukafika kati paka Bwana ametufikisha mahali hapa kama sio wao si kwamba na waabudu lakini katika miongozo ambao wamekuwa wakitupatia tumekuwa tukifanikiwa kila wanachokituambia mkifanya hivi mkifanya hivi na hivi mtabarikiwa na tumekuwa tukifata exactly vile wametuambia na tumeona baraka za Bwana Mungu awabariki. Amen. Amen. Asante sana Pastor Helen. Basi nimetimiza wajibu huo. Pili ningependa kuwatangazieni wapenda kwamba ibada ya leo ni ibada ya Mungu sana. Ibada ambayo kwa kweli tunaelewa hii kanisa la Kristo ni branch na tunaita local church. Lakini leo tumetembelewa na wapendwa wengi miko kama universal. Amen. So there are so many pastors ambao ndio walika wako hapa na sema tu Mungu awabariki sana kwa kuja na nimefurahia kwa kuja kwenu na pia hapa nimeona matembezi mazito sana ya viongozi wetu katika ulimwengu wetu wa ukiserikali hapa tunaye mheshimiwa deputy governor honorable majala mlahui pigie bwana makofi thank you so much karibu sana tumesikia kufurahi sana kwa uwepo wako hapa kanisa hili tunaombea taifa tukikiona hapa tunaona representation ya serikali yetu pia tuna senator wa taita taveta ambaye si mwingine bali ndugu Mwaruma kani honorable Mwaruma naomba usimame wengine hawafahamu yes so ni senator Mwaruma ambaye anawakilisha taita nzima katika 
useneta. Kwa hivyo kuna two parts ya ibada. Ibada hii mwanzo ni ibada ya kumwabudu Bwana, alafu kuna speeches tutafanya wakati tumemaliza ibada ya kawaida. Kwa hivyo msioni na wasiwasi just stay put. We shall give you time tukitoka kule nje. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Na wengine watakuja baadaye. Tuna two parts lakini for now ningependa wapendwa wa kujitangaza kwenu rasmi kwamba ni nimebarikiwa sana leo kutembelewa na wazazi wangu wa kiroho kwanza Mungu ameniokoa singekuwa hivi kama si bwana amen nyinyi mnajua wataita ambao nimeishi nao hapa wengine tulifanya nanyo vituko mnanielewa bwana Yesu asifiwe kweli ningekaa hivi kama si Yesu eh? sasa basi kama ni hamshangai mimi mwenyewe nashangazwa na maisha yangu mimi mwenyewe nashangaa <laughs> Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Sasa basi kuokoka ni kuingia katika urithi. Sameni urithi. Na urithi huo ni urithi wa Ibrahimu ambapo Mungu alifanya maagano na yeye na akasema mtu yeyote akiwa ndani ya Kristo anafanyika mrithi katika ufalme wa Mungu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Lakini sasa basi mrithi pia tumefundishwa kuwa hana tofauti na mtumwa anapokuwa mtoto. Amen. Sasa Mungu amenibariki tangu nimeokoka tena baada ya kuniokoa kama vile umesikia Pastor Helen mke wangu akisema alinipa wakufunzi semeni wakufunzi ambao ndio wamekuja leo kanisa la Kristo ni jamii amen ni jamii kubwa ambayo inaongozwa na baba mmoja na mama mmoja amen hapa pwani haleluya Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa sababu tuna walimu wengi sana wanaweza kuja lakini hatuna baba wengi leo tumetembelewa na baba yetu ambaye alitulea sote katika ulingo wa Kristo pwani hakuna pasta wa pwani ambaye hajapitia kwa mikono yake amen yeye ndiye ametutuma na tumekuja hapa haleluya presbyter let me tell you with all humility sometimes i minister here alafu huwa naambia wapendo ya kwamba ingawaje nimetoka kwetu hapa panaitwa manganga manganga ni kijiji kiko hapa juu kama nitakorofishwa kihuduma hapa sitaenda manganga nitakuja Mombasa. Maana ni nyinyi ndio mlituma, si ndio? So you sent me because you cannot minister until you are sent and you will never be a leader until you are under a leader. Amen. So with all due respect, I love to all of us to stand. Nimkaribishe mamangu. Alafu yeye atachukua mkutano atamaliza kila kitu. To sim- oh, sorry, I'm sorry. My God, my God, my God. Hebu kan nisameni. Semeni pastor ni mwanadamu. Ketin, ketin. You see, we are not leaders. We are, we, are not, we are not leaders because we are fa- perfect. Do you understand, brethren? We are leaders because we are called. Sometimes we are called. Ay, pastor mzima. Yeah, anaweza. Hallelujah. Ndiyo, nikuwa nasema katika ulingo wa wale ote mbao mekaribishwa. Wachungaji wa ote mbao mko hapa ni mesema karibuni. Nakini kuna rafiki yangu. Amen. Buwanda Yesu wa sifiwe. Si rafiki yangu tu, lakini katika kuwasiliana na katika hii kazi lipukwe naendelea ni mmoja wale ambao wameshikilia sana kwa maombi japo alikuwa yuko Nairobi. Amen. So nataka kutambua uwepo wake na nitampatia nafasi asalimie ndio baadaye nitamleta eh, wazazi wangu ambao wamenielelea kiroho. Tuna kati yetu pasta wa Mavuno Church Nairobi na si mwingine bali ni pasta Mureivi. Please, welcome please. Just come up. Say something. Yeye tamruhusu azungumze because yeye na mke wake oh good 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 karibu bwana sifiwe praise jesus uh, what an honor for us to be here this morning we are so blessed the family of god is a big family and we are members of the same family anasema ni siku njema ambayo bwana amefanya na nafurahi kuwa hapa pamoja na jamii yake amen And uh, I'm here with my wife uh, of many years, uh, Carol. God has made us co- co-ministers. She's also a minister in Mavuno Church with me. I don't know if you would just say something so they hear your voice. Praise the Lord. As we were worshiping this morning, My prayer for this church. Ombi langu kwa kanisa hili. 
is that God will remember ni kwamba Mungu atakumbuka that this altar that has been set here ya kwamba madhabahu haya ambayo yamewekwa mahali hapa every time we worship kila wakati tutapokuwa tunaabudu the lord himself will come down Mungu mwenyewe ashuke and that this whole area na kwamba maeneo haya yote people will be set free watu watawekwa huru that because of this church na kwa sababu ya ushirika huu wa makanisa hili this whole township ya kwamba eh, mji wote huu yeah will people will be attracted to come here watu watavutiwa na kufika hapa that they may receive salvation ya kwamba waweze kupokea uokovu and that they might receive deliverance na kwamba kaweza kupokea ukombozi. May God remember that every time you worship. Mungu akaweze kukumbuka hilo kila wakati tunapokuwa tunaabudu. Amen. Amen. I think for us it's just to say we are honored to be here. Uh, kwa, kwa sisi ni kusema kwamba tumeheshimika kuwa mali hapa. Uh, to the presbyter, to your wife, we are so honored to meet you today. Kwa mzee wa wazee na mama nzinga, tumeshukuru na kunyenyekea kuwa na nyinyi mali hapa. And we honor you and the work you are doing for the for the gospel. Na tunawaheshimu na kazi ile ambayo mnafanya kwa injili. Pastor and mom, I sh- we share your joy. Pastor wadu na mama mkeo wako, tunashukuru na tunafurahia pamoja. We are shouting with you in the spirit. Tuna tunafurahia pamoja. And we bless God for you. Na tunamshukuru Mungu kwa ajili yako. We have been praying for this work since it began. Tumekuwa tukiombea kazi hii tangu imekuwa ikianza. And we will continue to pray for it. Na tutaendelea kuiombea. God bless you. Mungu awabariki. God bless you too my brother and my sister. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Sasa ningependa tutulie kidogo tupate historia fupi sana kuhusu kanisa hili sababu wengi wenu labda mara ya kwanza kuwa hapa hamjui tulitokaje ama ilikuwaaje paka kufikia hapa tumeandaa historia kidogo ambayo nitamwita Dickones ama shemasi wetu mkubwa hapa si mwingine bali dada Rose Shali Bongosa aje mali alipo atusomee hiyo historia na msikize kwa makini ndio mtawaelewa vile Mungu alituchukua wapi paka kufikia hapa mpigie bwana makofi wakati Rose anakuja Continue clapping to the Lord for her Welcome our Dickoness we, we love you so much Sikize kwa makini sasa Bwana Yesu asifiwe nataka kumshukuru Mungu maana Mungu ni mkuu amen uh, the tongue is very strong uh, ulimi uh, ni mzito una um, nguvu amen kila ambacho tunachokiri na ndimi zetu ni kwamba utendeka uh, nikiwa Nairobi uh, tulikutana na pasta wadu na katika mvon and i told him go start the work and i will support you and from that day god started moving amen and today i am here supporting him hallelujah i'll read the history of uh, Chris Kochach Mwatate uh, from Pastor Wadu. I'll read in Swahili. Ushirika huu wa Crisco ulianza hapa Mwatate baada ya maombi. Ulianza kwa room ya 10 by 10 huko kambi ya Punda au Laminyi. Baada ya hivyo kikundi cha uinjilisi kutoka Mombasa kikahubiri Watu wakaokoka na hivyo ikao kwamba watu wahamie Roots Hall 1992 Tuliendelea kukaa Roots Hall hadi tulipopata plot mahali hapa Hatukuweza kuhama kwa haraka kuja mahali hapa ili tuchukua muda mrefu mpaka wakati 
tulipoulizwa na mwenye kutupa sehemu hii kwa nini hatupatumii hata hivyo hatukuwa na urahisi hivyo maana bado tulikuwa tunaomba hapo sasa wakati wa Mungu ulipofika ndipo tukahamia mahali hapo ambapo palikuwa ni mabati ujenzi wa biashara ya nyumba ya kusagia mahindi na duka la Fajal Jamal mwenye kutupa ploti hii alikuwa hajaokoka tukaamua kuchukua saumu ya siku tano tukiwa kikundi cha familia tatu familia ya mchungaji Simon Wadu Elda Mthoka na mke wake aliyelala katika bwana hivi majuzi pamoja na Rose Bongosa ambaye ni mimi baada ya siku tano Elda Bongosa mcharo akaja akiwa ameokoka na nguvu nyingi sana Hata hivyo baada ya wokovu tumetembea pamoja na Elda Bongosa Mcharo katika kamati ya ujenzi. Msingi wa jengo hili ulianza tarehe 14 mwezi wa Machi 2016. Kamati wakati huo ilikuwa chini ya Elda Patrick Mwashewa. Nafikiri nimemwona Elda Mwashewa mahali. Amen. Baada ya hapo ndipo Elda Alfred Mzae akachukua hatamu ya uongozi na hapo tukaanza jengo la hekalu ambalo ilikuwa iwe Sunday school. Baada ya kukamilisha jengo la Sunday school tulichagua uongozi mpya ambapo Brother Justus Mtale Where are you Brother Justus Mtale he's behind there Brother Justus Mtale alichukua hatamu ya kuwa mwenyekiti hadi sasa. Katika jengo hilo la mabati tumekaa zaidi ya miaka ishirini. Tulihamia katika jengo la Sunday School tarehe 29 Oktoba uh, 2017. Hekalu hilo tumeabudia kwa zaidi ya miaka mitatu hadi tarehe 24 mosi 2021 juzi haleluya jiwe la msingi lilikuwa limewekwa na presbyter mzinga uh, tarehe saba march 2020 wakati huo alikuwa ametoa unabii mzito kuhusu ujenzi wa hekalu hili ambao ulikuja kutimia kwa wakati wa Mungu alikuwa ametoa uh, unabii huo kupitia haga mbili 18 na Zakaria 8 20 hadi 23 uh, Presbyter Nzinga alisema hivi wakati akiweka jiwe la msingi alisema ya kwamba ujenzi wa hekalu hili utajengeka katika njia ya kiajabu. Amen. Na ikawa kwamba kweli Mungu ametimiza unabii huo na vile mama ametangulia kusema mama pasta Wadu ametangulia kusema mambo haya macho hayajawahi kuona masikio hayajawahi kusikia wala hayajawahi kuingia katika mioyo. Haleluya. Ilikuwa ni kitu cha ajabu na kushangaza maana tulikuwa tunajiuliza tutachanga hadi lini tukamilishe hili jengo. Lakini kwa sababu ni Mungu amesimama kwa ajili ya jengo hili, jengo hili lilikamilika na tunashukuru leo hii tuko mahali hapa. Haleluya. Wakati tulikuwa katika jengo la mabati tulipata pia kutembelewa na presbyter Nzinga na mama Rashiku Nzinga na pia mama Rashiku Nzinga 
akamtolea pasta wetu pasta Simon Wadu unabii tarehe 17 mwezi wa pili uh, mwaka wa elfu mbili na mbili akisema ya kwamba stop fighting your own wars relax your days of struggling are over god is bringing faithful men who will stand with you do not look down upon yourself a seed of a great man of god has been planted in you and indeed that is true a seed of a great man has been planted in our pastor hallelujah tena baada ya miaka mitano presbyter nzinga na pastor gashiku nzinga walitutembelea mama nzinga tena akamtolea pastor wadu nabii mwingine ukisema as long as you are in mwatate there will be peace as in the days of samuel nobody will be against your ministry family church pastoral meetings the heaven they will not be against him whatever you stand to speak will be accepted and are there too you are the tower of this area neither principality no weapon tongue will rise against you they are subdued have no fear and be courageous the reproach has been removed the struggle is over look forward for your rest you your family and those around you and indeed today we are here to celebrate the goodness of god amen thank you so much dada yetu kwa soma historia hiyo na nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya umbali ambao Mungu ametuletea na kama mmesikia mke wangu akisema the eye has not seen the ear has not heard neither have they gone in the hearts of men the things that God is going to show us so already we have seen this temple si ndio wapendo tusijenge tusi hapo tusonge mbele tena amen nashukuru kabla sijamleta mami nimeona uwepo wa representative wa national government ambaye ni chifu wetu pia ameingia tumpigie bwana makofi kwa chifu mwashigadi kambucha simama chifu thank you so much god so we are in safe hands na mungu awabariki sana nao kwa unyenyekevu wote ningependa sasa tusimame sote wapendwa tuweze ku recognize mtumishi wa mungu ambaye amenikuza mamangu wa kiroho na babangu lakini nitamwita mama kwanza amekuja na ndugu zangu wengi sitaki kusema atawasema yeye karibu mami mpigie bwana makofi anapokuja Brother Marshall, where's Marshall? Pastor Marshall please come on. Interpret mami. Inyang. Uh, thank you. We may be seated. Santeni tuweza kukaa. Um indeed we very very appreciative to God. Hakika tunashukurani nyingi sana kwa Mungu of the great work that he has done. Kwa ajili ya kazi kuu ambayo ameitenda. And as we stand on this altar today. Na tunaposimama madhabahuni hapa siku hii ya leo. We acknowledge that this is a doing of the Lord. Tunatambua kwamba huu ni utendaji kazi wa Bwana. And indeed God uses human beings. Na hakika Mungu anatumia watu wake. Binadamu. Binadamu. And so we, we are here to appreciate that he has found vessels in which he can use to glorify his name na, and to accomplish his purposes. Na tunashukuru kwamba ametumia vyombo kukamilisha makusudi yake. I stand here on this altar today. Na simama hapa siku hii ya leo. A very humbled mother. Mama ambaye amenyenyekea sana. Knowing where we've come from tukikumbuka kule ambako tumetoka seeing where we are as pastor helen was saying na tukiona mahali ambapo tumefika and even seeing where we are going na pia kuona kule tunakoenda because indeed we have not yet arrived maana kuhakika bado hatujafika today i am behaving myself 
Leo ninaweka nidhamu zangu zote. I'm waiting to come back Pastor Wadu. When everybody is not here, it's just us, you know, so Angojea kurudi tena hapa Pastor Wadu. Um we're here actually all our pastors from the coast region. Hakika wachungaji wetu wote wa eneo la pwani wako hapa. We've actually been here for two days. This is the third day. Hakika tumekuwa hapa kwa siku mbili leo hii ni siku ya Just tatu. Just time to fellowship and eat together and talk and pray and it's been a wonderful time. Tumekuwa na wakati mzuri wa kushiriki, kuomba na kula pamoja na umekuwa na wakati wa ajabu. So you will allow me to introduce our sons and daughters in the gospel. Hivyo mtaniruhusu nitambulishe wana wetu na binti zetu katika injili. So I'd like to ask all the pastors and their wives from the coast region, Crisco, please stand. Nataka niulize wachungaji wetu pamoja na wake zao tafadhali msimame. I will actually ask you to come. Hasana waomba muje hapa juu. And I know you're very disciplined people. Najua wao ni watu wenye nidhamu. And just one minute. Dakika moja moja. Where you will introduce yourselves. Unapojitambulisha. And then we will continue with the next part of the service. Na hatimaye tutaendelea na sehemu ile nyingine ya ibada. Uh, Pastor Wadu and Pastor Helen have already spoken. Uh, mchungaji Wadu pamoja na mchungaji Helen wamenena tayari. Okay, yeah. So they will just you just say your names. Nitasema tu majina yenu. And I think we we'll just we we'll just do a random, you know, introduction. Uh, utambulizi huu utakuwa tu wa vile utakavyokuwa tumesimama. So Pastor Wadu and Pastor Helen have already introduced themselves. Mchungaji wa na mkewe wameshajitambulisha. Haleluya, Bwana asifiwe. Salamu za Yesu. Mimi ni mchungaji Jotham Andai kutoka Kilifi. Na niko na mke wangu. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sisi ni kitinda mimba. Ndio naona tumekuwa wa kwanza. Hallelujah. Amen. From Crisco Kilifi. Amen. Ana sifiwe. Mimi ni Abigail Mkaya na kutoka Crisco Church Malindi. Crisco Malindi. Bwana sifiwe. Mimi naitwa mchungaji daktari Mvuri Amgala kutoka Miritini Church. Na niko na mke wangu. Naitwa Martha Mvuria kutoka Miritini, ni mume wangu. Bwana Sifiwe. Mimi ni mchungaji Silas Kesi. Jirani yenu hapa. Karibu kabisa. Taveta. Asifiwe. Majina yangu ni Naomi Kesi, mchungaji. Kesi ni mume wangu. Kaveta. Mimi ni mchungaji Thomas Moshe kutoka Ukunda, Mjamu. Bwana asifiwe. Mimi ni Griselda Moshe wa uh, Kristo Ukunda. Bwana asifiwe. Mimi ni mshungaji Bernard Kima kutoka Mikindani, Mombasa. Haleluya. Jane Kima. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Naitwa Pastor Kaingu na toa mtopa. Ah, uh, no. Bwana asifiwe. Uh, ni Christine Kaingu kutoka mtopa. Bwana asifiwe. Mimi ni John Angelo, evangelist in training, iko Crisco Central Mombasa. Bwana asifiwe, na mimi ni Grace Ngeno, wife. Bwana asifiwe, na mimi ni pastor in training Geoffrey Kamau Gidinji kutoka Likoni um, branch. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Namsaidia Gitenji kama mke wake. Bwana asifiwe. Stephen Obanye, 
Central Church Mombasa, pastor in training. Chini yako. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Marshal Mbaru, na mchungaji wa Maria Kani, bwana wabariki. Bwana asifiwe. Uh, kwa majina naitwa Florence. Mimi ni mke wa mchungaji Masho. Bwana wabariki. Bwana asifiwe. Kwa niaba ya mme wangu ambaye hayuko hapa, mimi ni Selina Mwachofi, Central Church. Amen. So um, that's a team that we came with. Hii cho ndicho kikundi ambacho tumekuja nacho. And indeed a team that we work with. Na ndicho kikundi ambacho tunafanya kazi nacho. So as I was saying earlier, they were very appreciative to God. Na kama nilivyotangulia tunashukurani nyingi kwa Mungu. And I think the greatest testimony I would give. Na ushuhuda ule mkubwa ambao ningepeana outside of salvation nje ya wokovu is that our God is not limited by situations circumstances experiences when god has determined to do something nothing and no one can stop him ni kwamba mungu hazuiliwi na mazingira na hali na mapito yetu kile ambacho ameazimia hakika atakamilisha amen and so with those few remarks i would want to take um, this honor na kwa maneno haya machache nataka nichukue heshima hii to welcome my husband kuweza kumwalika mumewe who is also my pastor ambaye pia ni mchungaji wake my bishop askofu wake my friend rafiki yake my mentor mfunzi wake my lover mpenzi wake and i hear the young people saying the only bean in the githeri whatever that means so that's a horrible dish just one bean so you're welcome to come and minister to us hallelujah amen uh thank you we'll be seated santeni mnaweza ukaa now for those of you who have never met us before na kwa wale ambao hawaja kutana nasi kabla that is my wife huyo ni mkewe since everybody still in the process of introducing their wives na we also introduce her to you. Na kwa sababu kila mtu anatambulisha mkewe naye pia anatambulishwa kwenu. We want to join this church to really rejoice before the Lord. Uh, Tumefurahia mbele za Bwana for this great work that God has done in this place. Kwa sababu hii ni kazi kuu ambayo Mungu ametenda mahali hapa. As I say that this is a beniza for Mwatate Church. Na wakati tulipokuwa tukikata mkanda pale tukasema hii ni Ebeneza kwa kanisa ya Mwatate. Ebeneza simply means this far the Lord has brought us. Na hiyo inamaanisha umbali huu Bwana ametuleta. So we want to know we are rejoicing and just want to also thank all of you who have come from different places to come and rejoice with us. Na hivyo basi tunafurahia na tunashukuru kila mmoja ambaye amekuja kusherehekea pamoja nasi. We want to especially on my own behalf to appreciate our government officials who have come to grace this occasion. Na pi, pia kwa niaba yangu mimi mwenyewe tunataka kushukuru kwa viongozi wetu wa kiserikali ambao wamekuja kuweza kufurahi pamoja nasi. We feel we feel honored to have you with us in this place as we celebrate together. Tunajisikia kuheshimika sana na uwepo wenu kuepo nasi asubuhi ya leo. As a pastor says, we believe in praying for the nation. Na kama mchungaji alivyosema, sisi tunaamini kuliombea taifa letu. And as the scripture says, give honor to whom honor is due. Na maandiko yanasema mpe heshima kwa yule anayestahili heshima. So I want to know we honor you for your services that you're offering to us in the government. Na hivi tunataka mjue kwamba tunawaheshimu kwa huduma ambazo mnatupatia kupitia kwa serikali. The Bible says The Bible says Romans 13 that all authorities are ordained of God. Na maandiko yanasema uheshimu wafalme kwa sababu mamlaka yote yamewekwa na Mungu. So we believe just as we are called of God to minister to the people of God, God has also called you 
to minister in those offices in the government. Tunaamini ya kwamba kama vile Mungu alivyotuita kuhudumia watu wake nenye pia Mungu amewaita kuhudumu kupitia kwa ofisi hizo. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we all happy to be the house of the Lord? Je, sote tunafurahia kuwepo katika nyumba ya Mungu? Everybody happy to be the house of the Lord? Je, kila mtu anafurahia kuwepo katika nyumba ya Bwana? The Bible says I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord. Biblia inasema nalifurahia waliponiambia twendeni nyumbani kwa Bwana. And I want to assure you Just in case you are not glad now, you will be glad you came by the time we are through with this meeting. Na kama ilivyo sasa tunafuraha leo kuwepo mahali hapa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to disturb you a bit. Can you all stand? Let's set a mood for the ministry of the word just for one minute. Na wasumbua kidogo hebu tusimame kidogo tunapojiandaa kwa ajili ya huduma hii. Yesu wako wakudiwa.
Bana tunapua sherekea uku wako Especially over this great thing you have done here Kwa jili ya jambo hini kuwa mbalo militenga mani ya mbalo To acknowledge your Lord that this is your duty And is marvelous in our eyes Saka kutambua kwa mba ni utendaji wa kukazi na unapendeza macho nipe Receive praise your for Lord Tuna kupa sifa Come now, O Holy Spirit Shuka sasa roho As we wait again today in this place Hata tunapuwe kwa mbalo As we wait for this Na mba utu wako Your glory your power to come and put a seal of your approval on this place. We thank you once again. Let your presence continue to be this place. Bless you, your seal and your name on this very building today. Mwuri wako na jina lako kutoka siku hii ya leo In Jesus name Jina la Yesu Amen Amen Yuri Kusito Now since we are dedicating the house of God Na kwa sababu tunafanya hii vindani ya nyumba ya mwuri We want to share a few scriptures Nataka kushiriki maandiko machache To prepare our hearts as we set ourselves to dedicate the house of the Lord today the thought I have is I like to all of us to appreciate the importance of God's house in the heart of God. How God loves his house and how that he'll go to all lengths to get his house established anywhere. Na jinsi ambavyo atafanya vyote kuhakikisha kwamba nyumba yake imestawishwa. We like to share from a little bit of God's or the history of God's house in the scriptures. Nataka kuangalia historia ya nyumba ya Mungu katika maandiko and see how God concerned himself with his house. Na kuona jinsi Mungu alijihusisha na nyumba yake. If you have a Bibles, I give you, let me just give you a quick story. Uh, in a story form so that we reduce the reading of scriptures so that we take time. Na kama una Biblia yako taangalia lakini tutapeana tu wa historia kutoka kwa Biblia ili tuokoe wakati. When God called his people the children of Israel, wakati Mungu alipowaita watu wake wana wa Israeli. In Exodus chapter uh, 20 uh, 19 verse 5, he said, he gave them a promise that I'll be your God and I'm going to make you a royal priesthood. You are going to be kings and priests unto me. Na akahidi katika kitabu cha kutoka kuminatisa kutoka mstaru watano ya kwamba mime nitakuwa mungu enu na nyenye mitakuwa makuhani wangu. It was always desired to have relationship with God. It has been in God. God's desire to have a working relationship with his people. Mana mungu wa metamani kuwa na uhusiano wa utendajikazi na watu wake. So one time Wakatu moja kamuambia Musa aliekua ni kiongozi. He told them, he told Moses, tell my people that I'm going to come before them. Na akamuambia Musa, wambie watu wangu kwamba nitakuja mbele. Tell them to prepare themselves, sanctify themselves, and let's meet on the mountain, that's Mount Sinai. Akamuambia wambie wajiandae, wajitakase, na tukakutane katika mlima Sinai. The story is in Exodus chapter 19. Hiyo hadithi iko katika kutoka mlangu wa kuminatisa. So, the kind of prepare, the thought, at least the thought they had prepared themselves. Na, wao walifikiria kwamba wamejianda. So, when God came, when they were all trying to climb the mountains and they have a good sight of the Lord as he come down. When the Lord came, he didn't come the way they expected. Na, hivyo wakati mungu walipokuja, walikuwa mejeka mahali sawa kweza kuona vizuri ule mlima. Hakuja katika njia walio tarajia. The Bible says that first there was an earthquake, then there was a sound of a loud trumpet, then there was darkness in the place, the place was fearful, terri- I mean terrifying. Maandiko anasema kwanza kulikuwa na tetemeko la ardi, tena kukawa na sauti ya baragumu, na giza likajaa. So the children of Israel, of course, up, up, before that happened, I'm sure they must have probably challenged Moses and told Moses, you always meet with God up there and come and tell us what everything God is saying. We are going to meet God for ourselves this time around. Na ataka kuamini ya kwamba kabla hapo walikuwa memuambia Musa, 
kila wakati wewe ndio unaenda unasema umekutana na Mungu unatuletea habari leo hii tuenda kukutana na Mungu sisi wenyewe so god comes not in the way they expected loud sound darkness you know earthquake and the next thing they are no longer interested in seeing god now you know they told moses they told moses if that's how god talks if that's how god communes with his people please don't let him talk to us anymore na hivyo basi moses go to the mountain speak to god tell, let god tell you all he wants about us you come and tell us our religion will end there simple na kwa sababu mungu hakuja kwa njia ambayo walikuwa wametarajia ya tetemeko na giza na ngurumo wakamwambia Musa kama hivi ndivyo Mungu anavyonena na watu wake basi sisi tunakomelea hapa wewe nenda ukasikie na mkubaliane yote alafu uje utuambie dini yetu mwisho wake ni hapa praise the lord bwana asifiwe so now they have rejected god they don't want to hear anything about god anymore all they want is a simple religion where moses goes to the mountain speaks to god he tells them what he wants to you god wants they come and even in that they still didn't obey they were still liars even when they said tell us what god has said we shall obey liars <laughs> na kwa sababu wakati huo walikuwa sasa wamekataa kumsikia mungu akamwambia musa wewe nenda huko kaongee na mungu na yale yote mungu mtakayokubaliana atakayokuambia sisi tutatii lakini walikuwa ni waongo maana walikuwa hawatatii but god being so loving and in his desire to have communion with them because he had a covenant with them he said i'm still going to find a way to be among my people i want to be among them na hata ijapokuwa ilitendeka hivyo lakini kwa sababu Mungu alikuwa anawapenda watu wake ni watu ambao na maagano na wao akasema bado nitatafuta njia ili nikae miongoni mwa so that was brings the house of god story because in chapter 25 of exodus the lord told moses tell the children of israel to make an offering a special offering give clothing jewels everything and in verse 8 he says and let them make me a sanctuary now the house the first house god is going to build na hivi ukija katika mlango 25 tunaona hapo ndipo hema likiwa linajengwa kwanza nyumba ya Mungu na akasema waambie watu watoe dhabihu nguo zao mali zao walizonazo vito vyao vya thamani na wacha wakanijengee hema hapo ndo tunaanza nyumba ya Mungu let them make me a sanctuary why that i may dwell among them wakanijengee hema kwa nini nikae miongoni mwao god wants to dwell among his people Mungu anataka kukaa katikati ya watu wake. We were created to have a relationship with God. Tuliumbwa ili tuwe na uhusiano na Mungu. And everything that was created has to be connected. God God has made us in such a way that we have to be connected with him if you are going to have life. Na kila kilichoumbwa ni lazima kiunganishwe na yeye. Hivi kama tulivyoumbwa ni tuunganishwe na yeye ndio tuwe na uzima. If you put a tree from the earth, ukingoa mti kutoka kwa ardhi, you will die. Utakufa. It can't survive without its connection to the earth. Haiwezi kuendelea na uhai pasipo kuunganishwa na ardhi. fish out of the water, ukimtoa samaki kutoka kwa maji, atakufa. It can't live outside the water. Hawezi kuishi nje ya maji. Praise the Lord. Bwana so is Human beings we cannot survive without God. Ndivyo ilivyo sisi wanadamu hatuwezi kuishi bila Mungu. We fool ourselves when we think just because God has blessed us with things and it appears we can depend on ourselves and do but you, you can't God created you to be connected with him. He is your lifeline. Without him you have no life. Tunajidanganya tunapofikiria kwamba tunaweza tukaishi bila yeye. Mungu alituumba kwamba uhai wetu unatokana na kuunganika na yeye. So God tells Moses, build me a sanctuary or a house that I may be among my people. And you see that is why the tabernacle that Moses built was built right at the center of the camps of the children of Israel. 
where it was placed, there were three tribes on this side, three tribes on that side, three tribes on that side, three tribes on the other side, and the tabernacle was built right at the center. Why? God wanted to be right in their center. Na hivu taona kwamba hema hilo ambalo linawakilisha uwepo wa Mungu lilipojengwa lilikuwa linakaa katikati ya makabila yale kumi na mawili ya wana wa Israeli. Kabila tatu mashariki, kabila tatu magharibi, kabila tatu kusini, kabila tatu kaskazini. Mungu anataka kukaa katikati ya watu wake. Verse 9 he emphasized and you shall build this house to show you how it is God is in, he is in this house. He says according to the pattern that I showed you on the mountain so shall you make the tabernacle. In other words, when he was on, on the mountain, you know Moses was on the mountain 40, 40 days. During that time, God gave him the blueprint of how the house should build. The plan of the house he was supposed to build. Na hivi, mungu ukiangalia mstari wa tisa, akasema kwamba na utajenga kulingana na muundo nilio kuonyesha. Wakati Musa alipokuwa siku wa rubaini na mungu kule mlimani, alipewa muundo wa vile ambavyo angejenga. And Moses being a very faithful servant of God. Musa. He made sure that he built that, that, uh, uh, that house of God to the least detail. Making sure every part, every piece of furniture, every shape, every measurement. Because God gave him the measurements. God doesn't just build things haphazardly. And God is not interested in you building something for him. When he says, build me this, he also says, this is how you should build it. I want it there like this. Just like any one of us. If today you want to build a house and you have a lot of money, would you just tell a contractor, go build a house for me? No. You'll be specific. I want this size. This. So is God. God commanded how the house should be built to the last detail. Musa kiwa mtumishi mwaminifu alifata maagizo ya kila kiwango alicho ambiwa akaweze kujenga vitu vile ambavyo vilikuwa ni viambao na kila chombo ambacho kingekuwa pale ndani na unaona mungu haku sema tu na ati Musa jenga nyumba alimpatia mpaka maagizo ya vile ambavyo angeweza kujenga kama ilivyo kawaida tuwewe na mimi wakati unajenga nyumba yako wezi kumwambia mwana kandarasi nenda tuka nijengee nyumba ni lazima utapeana maagizo ya vile nyumba yako unataka iwe praise the Lord Bana now in chapter, fast forward to chapter 40, Moses has been faithful, he has built this house, and uh, he has followed to the detail every instruction God wanted. Uh, kuendelea katika kitabu hicho cha kutoka mpaka mlangu wa rubaini, tunaona Musa amekua mwaminifu na amejenga kama mungu alivyo muagiza. Verse 33 of uh, Exodus 40 and verse 34, it says, and he raised up, that is Moses, he raised up the, the court all around the tabernacle and the altar and, uh, 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 and, the, uh, and the hang up of the screens of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Hivi unaona kwamba mstaru wa 30 na 30 na 30 na 30 na 30 na 30 na tunaona kwamba Musa akajenga kulingana na vila alivyo wakila sehemu na hatimaye akakamilisha kazi. And because of Moses building that building exactly as God wanted it, we see God so happy in verse 34, he says, then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord the tabernacle and fill the tabernacle. I would like the Lord to do that today. Amen. As an, as an approval, as him saying, I'm happy with this that you have done. Na hivi unaona kwa sababu mungu alikuwa mefurahishwa na kazi ile musa liwe ifanya, bebilia na mungu akashuka katika, katika njia ya wingu na akajaza utukufu wake kama isha ya kupiga muhuri. Na hivi naomu leo, mungu akaweze kushuka katika utukufu wake na kupiga muhuri mahali hapa. So much so was the glory in verse 35 that Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting. Why? Because a cloud rested above it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. See that? God was so much in the meeting that even the person who is normally used to his presence, even he couldn't minister. 
mstari wa 35 wala Musa hakuweza kuliingia hema la kukutania kwa sababu lile wingu lilikaa juu yake na huo tukufu wa Bwana ukaijaza maskani unaona Mungu uwepo wake ulikuwa mwingi sana kiasi cha kwamba hata yule mtu ambaye alikuwa amemtumia asingeweza kuingia mahali pale haleluya haleluya praise the lord Bwana asifiwe a time is coming wakati unakuja the, the tabernacle of Moses hema la Musa we we call it uh, uh, is a type is a type of Christ ni mfano wa Kristo the things we see in that tabernacle that were physical have spiritual reality in the new testament na ma, vitu vile ambavyo unaviona pale ndani katika hema la Musa vina utimilifu wake katika agano jipya god is still building is still in the building process yes stop yet Mungu. god is still building even now, even now. Mungu bado anaendelea na shughuli yake ya kujenga hajakoma bado. The only thing is he's not building with physical things he is building lives. Kitu ni kwamba hajengi he's building lives of men. He is building people. He is building stones of people of high level uh, integrity and purity of God. Ni kwamba Mungu sasa hajengi majengo haya halisi lakini anajenga wanadamu anajenga watu ambao watakuwa ni wahadhi ya juu na ni watu ambao wana heshima na tabia ambayo ni ya kiungu when jesus came he said i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it god is building a church on this earth that is going to shock the nations of the world Yesu alipokuja akasema nalijenga kanisa langu na malango ya kuzimu haitaweza kulishinda. The building is going on. Ujenzi unaendelea. What's going on in the church today is that God is bringing in the builders, not builders of buildings now, but builders of lives. Hivyo ni kwamba Mungu anahusika na wajenzi wa maisha si wa majengo kama haya. Because he's building a building called church maana anajenga jengo linaloitwa kanisa and god said jesus said concerning that church that is building na yesu akasema hivi kuhusu kanisa lile ambalo nalijenga after he is through building that church baada ya kukamilisha demons of hell satan himself can be given permission to hit it he says i build my church and the gates of hell shall not be able to shake it there's a church God is building on this planet that is going to be so powerful those of us who read a book about the early church when Jesus said I'll build a church at first he didn't he didn't explain much what he, what he was talking about he just said I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and left it at that na hivi unaona ya kwamba hata lile kanisa ambalo Yesu alikuwa na alilolianzisha la kwanza unaona kwamba hauoni mambo mengi sana maana alisema tu ya kwamba nalijenga kanisa na malango ya kuzimu haitalishinda. But when you come to the book of Acts, lakini tukuja katika kitabu cha Matendo of the apostles, matendo ya mitume. As you read the activities of the apostles and and the activities of the church at that time, that's when you understand what Jesus was building. That's when you understand what Jesus was building. Because the church there, those of us who 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 have read about the book of Acts, you know the church there was in a joke. The na, church in Jerusalem was not a joke. Na unaposoma kitabu ya matendo ya mitume na kuona lile kanisa la kwanza ndio unapata kuanza kuelewa kile ambacho Yesu alikuwa amemaanisha shughuli zake na vitu vile vilivyokuwa vinatendeka kanisani utagundua kwamba ilikuwa si mzaha. Kanisa la Yerusalemu. So powerful that he shook he shook the time, their time. He shook the societies at that time. Lilikuwa na nguvu kiasi kwamba lilitingisa jamii za wakati wake. When you are seen coming from church in Jerusalem that those days everybody feared you. Ungeonekana unatoka kanisani Yerusalemu siku hizo kila mtu alingekuja. Because in those days some services are so strange while the members are worshiping the Lord in the church people outside will see actual fire. Flames of fire on top of the building and they they're wondering my goodness are those people alive inside there? only to see them coming out with the shiny faces smiling having come from the presence of the lord manazama where we are going 
maana zamani hizo wangekuwa katika ibada hapo wakati wanamwabudu Mungu ungeona miale ya moto huko juu na mtu angeshangaa walioko ndani kweli bado wako hai na baadaye ungewaona wakitoka na nyuso zenye tabasamu na huko ndiko tunakoelekea just as in those days when Moses finished the building of uh, the building of the tabernacle kama zamani zile Musa alipomaliza ujenzi wa hema and it's a strange thing that it took nine months the same time it takes for a child to be conceived or to, to be born, to be held in the stomach of his mother na ni jambo la, la kushangaza ujenzi huo ulichukua miezi tisa muda ule ambao mtoto anakaa katika tumbo la mama the same way when Moses finished everything the glory of the lord fell on that tabernacle the church of jesus christ is about to experience a similar thing as, as as god is working in the church and lifting up the standards of righteousness there for 70 years na hivi unasoma katika kitabu cha isaiah mlango wa 45 na mstari ule wa kwanza ya kwamba hivi ndivyo bwana anavyosema kwa ajili ya mpako wa mafuta wake koreshi so anasema masihi wake ambaye nimemshika mkono wake wa kuume ili kuti, kuitisha mataifa mbele yake nami na nitalegeza viuno vya wafalme ili kufungua milango mbele yake hata malango yatakapofungwa Isaiah prophesied about Cyrus a hundred years before he was born Na Isaiah katabiri kuhusu Koreshi miaka 100 kabla Koreshi kuzaliwa So after the seven years Cyrus is born he is now the king in Babylon na hivyo basi baada ya kipindi chao cha miaka sabini, Koreshi ndiye um, mfalme kule Babeli. Notice he is not a man of God. He is not, not a prophet. He is just a, an ordinary man God had ordained to do a job. Na hivyo kutambua ya kwamba yeye si mtu wa Mungu, ni mtu tu ambaye Mungu amemchagua kufanya kazi yake. Long story short, they, he proclaimed the deliverance of the children of Israel from Babylon after the 70 years, telling them, go back to your land Israel to back city Jerusalem rebuild your city rebuild your land once again na hivyo akawatangazia uhuru akasema rudeni kwenu Yerusalemu kajenge miji yenu na mkajijenge kule Yerusalemu so they went back not all of them were very they were not very cooperative because it's not all who went who who had the message who left babylon to go back to their country na hivyo hawakuwa na kushirika mzuri tunajua si wote waliotoka babeli na kurudi yerusalemu they went back in bits the first expedition was led by israel then later on nehemiah led another expedition taking them back home to their country and nehemiah began to build the wall of jerusalem Hebo walienda kwa makundi matatu la kwanza likiongozwa na Ezra la pili likiongozwa na Nehemiah na hatimaye la tatu likamalizia wakiwa wameenda kujenga mji wao. By the way that story though it's just look at the story it was a real story that happened then but it has a parallelism in the church where the church of Jesus Christ today is in some form of bondage is held up uh, in, in a siege She doesn't have a lot of authority. She doesn't have a lot of influence. She's like cornered under, you know, nations and uh, uh, governments and all forms of, you know, uh, uh, leadership. So she doesn't have a lot of voice. She is in a state of Babylon. But soon I'm saying soon she's going to come out. Na hiyo pia ni mfano wa kanisa kama vile walivyokuwa Babeli unaona kanisa nalo hivi halena mamlaka kamili na uhuru kamili bado linashikiliwa na kutawaliwa kiasi na serikali za dunia lakini nataka kusema hivi hivi karibuni na nasema karibuni sana kanisa nenda kuwa na mamlaka the Lord is raising up Nehemiahs now Mungu anainua kina Nehemiah sasa who are now going to start rebuilding the fallen walls of the spiritual walls of the, of the church Mungu anainua kina Nehemiah ambao wanaenda kuzijenga kuta za kiroho ambazo zilianguka. And the church is going to be a, one more time a force to reckon with in the nations of the world. Na kanisa kwa mara nyingine itaenda kuwa ni nguvu ambazo mataifa zitatambua. Not by weapons or by you know uh, whatever other things you may think of using to be hard but she's going to be hard by the power 
and the anointing, when it is restored back to her, she's going to start commanding things. God has intended the church to get to a place where she shall command things and they shall happen. Now, just as it was in the, day of, in the days of the of the of the, of the, uh, the, the Acts of the Apostles, what you read, the Bible says, what we read in the Acts of the Apostles of the miracles and the great things that the Apostles are doing, what we read there is going to be like a joke when God lifts up the church this time round. Because the Bible says, the glory of the latter house, which is a church now, will be greater than the former church. He's saying, what we read in the book of Acts, greater things than those we read there are going to be happening shortly before the coming of the Lord. Na hivi wakati huu ambapo kanisa Mungu anaenda kulileta katika kiwango hicho, nataka kusema ya kwamba mambo yale ambayo unayaona kam, katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume itakuwa ni kama mzaha. Maana neno la Mungu linasema mvua ya mwisho itakuwa ni kuu kuliko ile ya kwanza. Kwa so, hivyo hivi mwisho Mungu anaenda kutenda mambo ya ajabu zaidi. So when they went back, waliporudi sasa, they began to build the wall. And Nehemiah they began to build the wall of Jerusalem. Nehemiah akajenga ukuta wa Yerusalemu. Uh, Ezra began to re- restore back uh, the word of the Lord as as Moses had given it that is the commandments and uh, the ritual uh, and the Judaize, I mean, the teachings of Moses, because he, he was a he was a scribe, so Na, so he he knew a lot about the 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 the, the, the doctrines of mosaic uh, mosaic era. Na Ezra na yakawa na rudisha tena mafundisho kama vile ambavyo Musa alikuwa ameyapeana akiwa mwandishi basi alikuwa anaofahamu na ujuzi mzuri wa yale mafundisho ya wakati huo Musa alikuwa amepeana so at last they were free na hatimaye wakawa wamerudi they are back in their land wamerudi katika nchi yao however hata hivyo some of them who had been in babylon for almost 70 years na kwa wengine ambao walikuwa wameishi babeli kwa kama they had become so comfortable those slaves they had become so comfortable they had homes they had money they had all they needed or the only thing is they were slaves in babylon however they chose that rather than going and joining their brothers in building jerusalem and the wall nehemiah was building at the time na wengine baada ya kukaa muda mrefu kule na walikuwa wametengeneza pesa wamejenga manyumba maisha yao yamekuwa burudani wakaona ni afadhali kubakia kule Babeli japokuwa ni watumwa kuliko kurudi na kuungana na ndugu zao kujenga tena mji wa Yerusalemu Remember also when Nebuchadnezzar came and captured the children of Israel from their nation he also destroyed the temple that is the the house of god that solomon had built kumbuka wakati nebukadnezar alipokuja na kuvamia mji wa yerusalemu mbali nakuta aliangusha pia hekalu lile ambalo sulemani alikuwa amejenga and he even went further and stole the utensils that were being used in the house of the law like the, the the ones things things like this which are used for the worship of of the children of Israel he also stole them he took them and in one particular kingship i think it was Darius or one of those kings they were having a party and guess what they were using the 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 golden utensils that were supposed to be used in the house of god they were putting wine in them and drinking out of them and having party they are party in a wicked way using the very vessels that are used in the temple of god and that's why that word came on the wall warning the king listen you think you're smart you saw writings up there he tried to read he couldn't get what he meant so what is this what hand is this you see the hand you see the writing but who is this And what are these, what is he saying? So after investigation, they got Daniel to interpret for him and tells, you know the meaning of that? He saying, you've gone you've crossed a line with God. You cross a line with God. In other words, that writing he say, you are in trouble. Na wakati uh, Nebukadnezar alipoangusha hizo zote, 
Tunaona pia aliba na vyombo ambavyo vilikuwa vinatumika pale hekaluni kama vile unavyoona vitu ambavyo vinatumika hapa kwa ibada na walipo vibeba kule kwao wakati wa mfalme mwingine anafikiri Dario wakawa wako na sherehe pale na wako wanatumia vile vyombo vya dhahabu ambavyo vilikuwa vinapaswa kutumiwa katika nyumbani mwa Mungu na wakati wakiendelea na sherehe zao ovu kiganja kikatokezea na kikaandika pale kwa ukuta wakajaribu kusoma hii na maanisha nini waliposhindwa basi Danieli akaja aliposoma akamwambia bwana mfalme umevuka mipaka Ul, yale maandishi anasema uko mashakani na Mungu Praise the Lord Bana your sikuza. days are numbered Siku zako zimehesabiwa Praise the Lord Bana sifiwa But let's go to the story This time the house of God that Nebuchadnezzar destroyed and took all the things is like because it was 70 year period they were away for 70 years Nebuchadnezzar has removed everything from the house of God the house has been uh, uh, vandalized everything has been removed now it's in the it's in the bush and there's nothing now going on there but the children of Israel have now been freed to go back so they began being in the war but they have not started building the house of the lord na hivi unaona kwamba baada ya kurudi baada ya miaka sabini, nyumba ya bwana ilikuwa imekaa gofu imeanguka ni maporomoko na baada ya kuwa sasa wamerudi sasa wanakuja wamejenga ukuta lakini nyumba ya bwana hawajaijenga now that is where hegai picks up from hapo ndipo ambapo sasa hagai anachukulia Hegai chapter 1 oh, I've lost Hegai Where was he Hagai mlango wa kwanza Where is Hegai is he near Jonah or Somebody somebody remind me is he, which which two books is he hidden between After Zephaniah is after Zephaniah He's so small that is lost in the Bible So He is now prophesy sasa ana tabiri this is chapter 1 verse 1 tusome hegai mlango wa kwanza mstari wa let's, let's go straight to the message verse 4 mstari wa 4 is it time he is telling the children of Israel now is it time for you to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple lies in ruins is this is reasoning with them huo mstari wa 4 je huu ndio wakati wa ninyi kukaa katika nyumba zenye mapambo ambao iwapo nyumba hii inakaa hali ya kuharibika now therefore thus says the lord consider your ways basi sasa bwana wa majeshi asema hivi zitafakarini nchi ya zenu you've sown much you bring in a little mmepanda mbegu nyingi i never have enough mmepanda mbegu nyingi mkavuna kidogo mnakula lakini hamshibi but you are not filled with the drink Mnakunywa lakini hamkujazwa na vinywaji. You clothe yourselves with the clothes but none of you is getting warm. Mnajivika nguo lakini hapana au naye moto. And he who has a salary, he who works and gets a little salary. Na yeye apataye mshahara nyinyi ambao mnafanya kazi kupata mshahara. He puts it in a pocket with the holes. Ili kuutia katika mfuko uliotoboka toboka. In others is simply saying if you don't if you don't honor my house I'm put I'm going to put holes in your in your pockets. Hiyo ina maana so every time you put your money it finds its way out and you have nothing to do. <laughs> you, are, you can't enjoy it in other words. Hiyo ina maana ikiwa haujihusishi na nyumba yangu basi naenda kutoboa toboa. Verse 8 go to the mountains. Pandeni milimani mstari wa wood build my temple. Leteni miti mkajenge hekalu langu. Please listen to this that I may take pleasure God takes pleasure in his house. Ele nikafurahie Mungu hufurahishwa na nyumba yake. God takes pleasure in his house. Mungu hufurahishwa na nyumba yake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That I may take pleasure. Ele nikafurahie. Then he continues. You look for much. Mume tarajia mengi. But indeed it came very little. Lakini mkapata kidogo. When you put it home, mlipoleta nyumbani, I blew it away. Nikapuliza nikapeperusha. Praise the Lord. Even that little you got, hata ile kidogo when you put it home, the Lord Bwana akaepuliza. And it disappeared out of your hand. So you again you couldn't value, you couldn't get value for it. Na hivyo basi hukupata thamani. And you wonder why? 
Na mnashangaa ni kwa nini? Lord says, Bwana asema, of my house kwa sababu ya nyumba yangu while every one of you runs in his own house. Nyumba yangu ambayo imeporomoka na nyinyi kila mtu ana nyumba yake. Now good enough after hearing this message the leaders then that were leading the chief of Israel the one was called Zerubbabel they obeyed the Lord and na, they said okay Lord we get it now they began to build the house Na walipopata ujumbe huu viongozi basi miongoni mwao akiwa ni Zerubbabel wakasema sasa basi tujenge nyumba And when they began to build the house Na wakati walipoamua kujenga nyumba Again to show you how God so loves his house Na kwa kukuonyesha jinsi Mungu alipenda nyumba yake When they began to build the house walipoanza kujenga nyumba the Lord said Bwana God you began Na kwa sababu sasa mmeanza verse 15 Starta wa 15 And now carefully consider from this day forward before the foundation of the stone was laid eh? before the before you started building that's what also say before you started building since those days when you are not done so he says when you went when one came or, or, to a, to a heap expecting to get 20 something 20 efforts see there was only but 10 When one came to the wine vat seeking to draw some wine he expected to get you know 50 bucks he only got 20 see i struck you with a blight and was, i god struck you because of my house that is lying in ruins anasema kwamba angalieni kutoka siku ya leo kabla ya siku hii ya leo aliyetarajia kupata vipimo 20 alipata kumi. kwa sababu mimi ndimi niliye mgonga but now they began to build lakini sasa mmeanza so kujenga so as they were building walipokuwa wakijenga verse, verse 18 consider now from the day or from this day that is from the 24th of the of the ninth month from the day Now the date there really does matter. Don't, don't forget about the date. He saying, now that you have laid the foundation even before you finish it. Anasema kwa sababu umeanza msingi hata kabla mkamilishe. I'll bless you. Nena waahidi nitawabariki. To show you how much he loves his house. Hiyo ni kukuonyesha vile anavyopenda nyumba. He doesn't have to even to get finished yet. He ah. begins to bless you from the day you lay the foundation and i'm telling you this truth we have proven it na anasema hata kabla hamjamaliza kitambo tumeweka msingi nitawabariki na ukweli huu na wahakikishieni tumeuthibitisha when we're building our house in i mean the, the church in the city wakati tulipokuwa tunajenga kanisa kule mjini and as we lay the foundation of the house tulipokuwa tunaweka msingi wa hiyo nyumba the lord gave me a word and told me to tell the people Bwana kanipa neno akaniagiza niambie watu building is finished. Kabla jengo hili likamilika 70% of you will have homes of your own. Asilimia sabini ya nyinyi mlioko hapa kila mtu atakuwa na nyumba yake. Today these brothers you have come with here are witnesses. Leo hii hawa wanuku ambao tumekuja nao ni mashahidi ke wako manyumbani kwao. The house of God. Nyumba ya Mungu is so deep in the heart of God. Emezikika katika moyo wako. Attention to the house of God, you can't go wrong. Na kila unapochesa katika nyumba ni utabarikiwa. It's a proven fact. Ni ukweli uliothibitishwa. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. That, that's how even, 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 even Solomon. Hata Sulemani. When Solomon was building the house, wakati Sulemani akijenga nyumba, he he built the house akajenga nyumba according to how God had wanted to build. Kulingana vile Mungu alitaka ijengwe. And the Bible says on the day of dedication because the Lord was so happy with it he so came down with his glory to the house and the next thing he tells to Solomon and tells Solomon Solomon I'm so happy just ask anything. Ask them anything. I'll give it to you right now. Na so, walipokamilisha na wakati wakiliweka wakfu basi uwepo wa Mungu utukufu wake ukashuka kwa nguvu na Mungu akamwambia Sulemani nimefurahi sana Sulemani umenifurahisha umeomba chochote utakacho and so, so, uh, Solomon of course we know 
He asked for the most precious thing in the world. He asked for wisdom. He told God, you've given me a big responsibility to lead the millions of your people. The only thing I need most now is a wisdom to guide them properly. Now, Suleiman, he did not ask for riches. He did not ask for power. He did not ask for influence. He did not ask for fame. Praise the Lord. And the Lord said, Solomon, I thought you were going to ask for money. I thought you were going to ask for power. I thought you were going to... You want wisdom? My goodness, that's another thing you have touched my heart again. Listen. Listen, Solomon. Listen, Solomon. You, you, you now doubly touched my heart. Listen. You, you are still... Though, though you didn't ask for it. You didn't ask for riches. But I'm going to make you the richest person on this planet. Plus... You are going to be the wisest king ever lived. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why? The house of the Lord. Sulemani basi alipopewa fursa hiyo, akaomba kile ambacho nchatamani kabisa dunia mzima. Akamambia buwana, kwa sababu umenifanya kwa mtawala wa watu wengi hawa mamilioni, naomba ukani ajalie hekima ya kuongoza watu wako vizuri. Basi mungu akamambia, tena Sulemani, umenigusa tena moyo wangu ni lingefikiria kwamba ungeuliza pesa na mali ungeuliza mamlaka na, na, na jina kubwa lakini hukuuliza haya yote ama ukutambulika kuwa mashuhuri na kwa sababu hukuuliza haya yote basi nitakupatia utajiri na hakutakuwa na tajiri mkubwa kuliko we duniani pamoja na hekima yote kama mfalme haleluya 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 how many are getting the message you are getting the message Wangapi wanapokea ujumbe? God honors his house. Mungu anaheshimu nyumba yake. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Not because it's of course uh, uh, somewhere when, when Solomon was dedicating the houses, this house is so small. Obviously you can't fit in here. I mean, you are God, you fill all the earth. You can't fit in here, you can't come in here. But it's not that we want we want you to come inside here, the whole of you. We just want you to mark this place and put your name on it. Wakati Sulemani akieka wakfu lile hema, lile hekalu, akasema kwa mba najua mungu, wewe ni mkuu sana uwezu katoshea kwa jengo hili dogo. Lakini tunacho omba ni kwa mba, ukaweze kueka jinalako mahali hapa. We want to change the service now. Nataka kubadili ibada sasa. And enter into the dedication of this building. Na kuingia katika sehemu ya kueka wakfu jengo hili. We want to dedicate this building to the Lord. Nataka kueka jengo hili kwa buwana. We want God to honor this building. Nataka mungu wakaheshimu jengo hili na mahali hapa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to know that the house of God sometimes is called an altar. Na nivyema kujua kwamba nyumba ya mungu wakati mgini inaitu wa madabahu. And speaking of altars. Na tukinena juu wa madabahu. There are two types of altars. There are divine altars and there are demonic altars. Kuna aina mbili za madhabahu, kuna madhabahu ya kipepo na madhabahu ya kiungu. The definition of an altar, an altar is simply a place where or a spot where humanity connects with the spirit. It could be a, a demonic altars of course you get connected with the spirit of the devil. But that's where humanity connects with the spirit world. That's what an altar is. An altar is a particular place, sanctified, so that when you get there, somehow there's a connection between your human being and the spirit world. Madabahu kwa rahisi tunasema kwamba ni mahali ama eneo ambalo mwanadamu anaunganika na ulimwengu wa roho. Now, the importance of altars is this, that Altars are the ones which determine lifestyle of societies. Na umuhemu wa madabahu ni kwamba, madabahu ndio anayo jalisha mitindo ya maisha ya watu katika jamii. Towns, villages, and societies are affected or develop their culture and their social lifestyle being influenced by the various altars that are surrounding that area. The jobs that happen, it's influence from an altar, some altars in different places, which 
then influence the lifestyle or the social life of the society. Utagundua kwamba madhabahu yaliyoko kwenye kijiji ama kwenye mji ndio atakayojalisha mitindo ya maisha, tamaduni na hali ya kijamii ambayo inaendelea katika maeneo hayo. That's why we find when God gave uh, told Abraham to go to the promised land. Utagundua ukiangalia kutoka wakati wa Abrahamu kuingia katika nchi yake. God gave him two ways of possessing the land. Mungu akampatia njia mbili za kurithi ama kumiliki nchi. He Moja. told Joshua every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon there I've given unto you. You know the secret was all Joshua had to do is make sure he puts his stamp, he puts his soul on the place. Puts his soul on the place and as soon he steps on it it is his. As soon as he steps on it, it is his. As soon as he steps on it, I'm, 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 I'm trying to act it out because prophets like to act out things. So that even, if you, even if you forget the sermon, you'll always remember Presbyterian Zinga walked around the stage and that will remind you the message. Na hivyo basi, mungu wakamuambia Yoshua, kila mahali utakapo nyayo zako zitakapo kanyaga, hapo ni kwako. Ilimbidi tu, akanyage kwa migu yake. Na hivyo basi, mchu. Uh, presbyter na kanyaga ili hata ukisahau somo lote ukumbuke kwamba alitembea hapa mbele na utakumbuka kila kitu alichosema so in genesis chapter 13 we see that's the same method uh, abraham took the land this is what he says the bible in verse, uh, verse 17 arise god is telling abraham arise walk in the land through its length and its breadth and give for i give it to you Now little not in what was Abraham did. When Abraham then Abraham moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebrith uh, trees in Mamre which is in Hebron and he built an altar to the Lord there. He <laughs> built an altar to the Lord there. Why? He was dedicating the land to the Lord. Na hivi basi Mungu akamwambia Abrahamu inuka na ukatembee katika mapana na marefu ya nchi hiyo katika eneo hili lote la Hebron. Unaona kwamba na hivyo Abrahamu akatembea akakanyaga kitoa hema lake kutoka hapa hadi pale. Na maandiko anasema akamjengea Bwana madhabahu. Na hivyo Abrahamu alikuwa anafanya nini? Alikuwa anaweka wakfu eneo lile ama nchi ile kwamba sasa ni ya Bwana. Altars have power. Madabahu yana nguvu. They affect lifestyles of people and societies. Yanaathiri mitindo ya maisha na jamii. It's important to have the right altar wherever you are. Oh, man. Amen. And that's and as our sister was saying here, I concur with her that this altar is going to affect this whole Mwatate area. And it's going to achieve, to change the lifestyle and the social life of this area when david or oh, solomon was dedicating the temple the bible says that he called all the musicians he called the elders wakati sulemani alipokuwa akiweka wakfu hekalu la mungu maandiko inasema kwamba aliwaita wanamuziki wote pamoja na wazee and uh, in verse 3 verse 3 of king first kings 8 it says so all the elders of israel came and the priests took up the ark then they brought up the ark uh, the ark of the lord uh, the, the ark of the, 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 the meeting and brought it into the inner court of the tabernacle andiko anasema ya kwamba Makuhani wakalichukua sanduku la agano na wakalileta katika chumba cha ndani ama nyua za ndani za hekalu. The ark of the covenant was a box that used to represent God. Every time they had it, they knew the, to them it represented the presence of God. Sanduku la agano lilikuwa ni sanduku lililotengenezwa na mbao lakini liliwakilisha uwepo wa Mungu. It was so special that God had commanded that it will only be carried on the shoulders of the priests the Levites 
Na hivi basi ni la muhimu kiasi kwamba Mungu alikuwa ameagiza lingebebwa katika mabega ya makuhani walawi. Was Now today we have similar thing but it's not a real box. We don't have a box today. The Now, church what we have in the church is what I call the favor of the Lord. Na leo hatuna sanduku la mbao lakini kile tulicho nacho ni kile ambacho ningeita kibali cha Bwana. The favor of the Lord is something that makes you or makes every effort you you make succeed. Na kibali cha Mungu ni kile ambacho kinafanya kila juhudi unayoifanya ifanikiwe. When the children of Israel reached Shiloh which was a, like the headquarters uh, and they brought the ark of the Lord they built the, the they built the temple and they put the ark of the Lord na hivyo basi wakati wana wa Israeli walipofika Shilo wakajenga uh, hema na wakaweka hilo sanduku la agano in Joshua 18 katika Yoshua mlango wa 18 we read that now the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together in Shilo they set up the tabernacle of the meeting place and the and the land was subdued from that time Joshua 18 the ark of the lord once it is in the house once it is in the house of the lord then it means this altar will subdue all that is going on around maandiko anasema basi walipo lileta sanduku la agano katika mji wa Shilo na watu wote wana wa Israeli wakakusanyika mahali pale ndipo nchi yote ilipotiishwa chini hivi tunasema kwamba wakati sanduku la agano liko katika nyumba ya Bwana maeneo hayo yote yanatishwa so that kind of favor that is that is represented or, or that is presented by the ark of the covenant in the new testament today na hivyo tunasema kitendo hicho cha cha cha, cha kupata uh, kibali cha Bwana kinawakilishwa katika agano jipya leo. Something. It's a spiritual something but is carried by the priest. Na si kitu cha kuonekana na macho, ni kitu cha kiroho lakini kinabebwa na makuhani. So that is why along with uh, the music team I'm going to ask all the pastors all the pastors who are pastoring congregations please all of us are carrying a measure of that ark of the covenant can we bring it into this place by yep. you coming up here because it's on your shoulders the only way for you to be here is for you to be here ndio maana nataka kuuliza wachungaji wote ambao mnasimamia maeneo fulani Muje hapa mtakuwa mnalileta sanduku hilo la agano hapa stay at the back a little bit we still you are still part of the, the operation nyenye pia ni sehemu ya kazi hii wakupewa sifa na utukufu na heshima ni wewe mwenye nguvu na uweza ni Make a sweet melody to the Lord in worship. Just make a sweet melody to the Lord in worship and worship. Hallelujah, Rabba shika la bala boshanda. Ula basoni la bala kasoni la bala kariya boshanda. Oh, bala kasoni boshanda la bala boshanda. Eh, kariya bala basoni la bala boshanda. Bala bala kasoni la boshia la boshanda. Ola basola basila basanda e che aria bala basola basala basuka ola bala basola basala ola 
Baba, in the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. We want to thank you. Nataka kukushukuru for giving us the ability kwa kutupa uwezo and to provide on the provision na kila tulichohitaji for the building of this house. Kwa ajili ya ujenzi wa nyumba hii. Lord, we acknowledge. Bwana tunatambua that you are so great. Ya kwamba wewe ni mkuu. We cannot build enough building to contain you. Hatuwezi kujenga jengo la kukutosheleza wewe. Yet, oh Lord. Hivyo basi Bwana. You said that it pleases you. Ukasema kwamba inakupendeza to dwell in a tent as long as you are among your people. Lord, we ask you today that if it has pleased you and the name, just the same way you have enabled us with this building. Lord, we ask you today honor this building now. Oh God, in Jesus' name as it was in the days of the children of Israel when the ark and the tabernacle God was placed in Shiloh and dedicated father. The Bible says that O oh Lord that you subdued the nations on behalf of the children of Israel. Lord Jesus, you are praying the Lord you are going, going to cause this temple here this altar here to subdue all the powers of darkness in this town in the name of Jesus we ask you O God that we so honor this place that whoever will come and enter into this, this house with any need in their lives those that will be harassed out there and they come running to your house here please Lord hear their Prayer. Come and dwell here. We are inviting you to your own house now. Today we are saying, Lord, come now. Come, Lord Jesus. And make a dwelling here. Make a dwelling in this house. This is your house. We are proclaiming now. That this is your house. We are announcing to the nations that this is a house of the Lord. The Lord dwells here. The Lord dwells here. And we are asking you, oh God, when people come here running with the needs of Father, even when people sin and you bring, you bring about famine, and somehow because of sin, you hold with you hold the reins. Na kwa sababu ya dhambi umezuia mbwa. There be no rain. And people begin to suffer. 
Na watu wakaanza Because they don't produce their farms. Maana hawana mazao mashamba. People begin to suffer. Watu wanaanza kuteseka. Because they have no food because Mana of the famine and dryness. Kwa sababu ya ukame. Lord we are asking that when they come to lift up their prayer in this house. Bwana tunaomba wanapokuja kuomba katika nyumba hii. Lord you will hear them. You will hear them. And you will answer their cries. Everybody that will run, run to this house with any need or go looking for rescue, looking father for any kind of salvation, Lord, you will hear them and you will deliver them. We are praying today that your eye will be on this building in a special way. Your presence will be felt in this place in a mighty way. This is Today, oh God. Please Father. Bwana, honor us. Heshimu. Honor the effort. Heshimu bwana We may not be as perfect. Hatuko we are perfect. We are not perfect. Tunatambua sisi kama Lord we are striving. We are striving oh Lord. Bwana tunajaribu. We are striving to obey you. Tunajaribu kukuamini. We are striving to build according to your word. Bwana kuchenga kwa neno lako. We are striving to keep your principles Lord. Bwana tunajimudu kwa kanuni zako. We are striving to build your people in the right way oh God. Tunajimudu kuchenga maisha ya watu wangu kwa njia zako. Our labors. Tunaomba kwamba ukaheshimu. Our labors. Bwana ukaheshimu Jehovah this place oh God. Na ukaheshimu mahali hapa Bwana. And come and make your dwelling here. Na ukafanya makao mahali hapa. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. We ask you Lord. Na kuomba Bwana. From this whole region oh God. Bwana. That you are going to affect this re- this region. Utaenda kugusa maeneo haya. We are asking you Lord to be crowned over this land. We crown you Jesus over this land. We crown you Jesus over Mwatate. We crown you Jesus. Come now and take rule. Come now and begin to reign. Come now and begin to reign over this place. This is our prayer father. In the name of Jesus. Let the priests who minister in this place. Wacha kuhana ne hudumu mahali hapa. Honor their, their prayers Honor their desires And all those who seek your face in this house We pronounce blessings over their lives On your behalf Lord Move O God And honor everyone That will enter those doors Into this building This from today Leo kuto, kutoka leo hii ni nyumba yako in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu this end of god nakutikia hapa we dedicate it to you tunaliweka wakfu mikono mwako we dedicate this building to you bwana jengo hili tunaliweka wakfu mwako inside this building ndani ya jengo hili everything inside this building kila kilichoko shall be holy unto the lord kila kilichoko ndani ya jengo hili ni kitakatifu kwa bwana Every musical instrument, everything, every piece of furniture in this place, Lord, shall be holy vessel to the Lord. Ne vyombo vitakatifu kwa Bwana. You shall carry your power. Tashuka kwa nguvu zako. Those who sit, everyone who comes and sits on this is Father. They enjoy, they leave this place with the blessings of God. Kila wanataka katika anything, just sitting on these chairs of God because you are dedicating everything in this place. Kila atakayekaa kwenye viti hivi bila kufanya chochote atabarikiwa. This shall be holy ground to the Lord. Hapa ni mahali patakatifu kwa Bwana. This house. Nyumba hii holy grounds. Ni mahali patakatifu kwa Bwana. And everything inside it. Na kila kitu kilicho ndani yake is dedicated to the Lord. Naweka wakfu kwa Bwana. Holy service. Kwa huduma takatifu. Holy use. Kwa matumizi matakatifu. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. We thank you Father. Nakushukuru Baba. For allowing us to build something. Kwa kuturuhusu kujenga kitu. That you can dwell in. Ambayo unaweza kukaa ndani ni mwangu. We who are only but flesh and blood. Sisi ndio wadamu na nafsi. Ikakupendeza Baba. To accept. Kukubali. Our little labor. Kwa juhudi zetu. We praise you Lord. Nakusifu Bwana. We Baba. glorify you. Tunalikuza jina lako. We glorify you. Naomba Baba. This is holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. For the Lord is here.
here and where he is is holy. This is holy ground. We are standing on the holy ground for the Lord is here and where he is is holy. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all First King chapter 9. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished building the, old, the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's de desires wanted to do that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time and he said I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me I have consecrated this house 
I have consecrated this house which you have built to put my name there forever. Amen. The Lord is putting his name here. The Lord is putting his name here forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. I said forever. Amen. And my eyes and heart will be there perpetually. Amen. The heart of the Lord will be here perpetually. Amen. That is the Lord's promise. Some wafalme wa kwanza mlango wa tisa ikawa Sulemani alipokuisha kujenga nyumba ya Bwana na nyumba ya mfalme na mambo yote yaliyoingia moyoni mwake Sulemani naye akataka kuyafanya basi Bwana akamtokea Sulemani mara ya pili kama alivyomtokea huko Gibioni Bwana akamwambia nimeyasikia maombi yako na dua zako ulizotoa mbele zangu nimeitakasa nyumba hii uliyoijenga ili niweke jina langu humo milele Bwana anaweka jina lake hapa milele tena macho yangu na moyo wangu utakuwa hapo siku zote Now if you will walk before me as your father David walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I've commanded you and if you keep my statutes and my judgments then I will establish you I will establish the throne of your of your kingdom forever as I promised David my servant no. hallelujah Amen. god is promising that if we stay and continue to honor his word and continue to live according to the truths we have received god is going to establish many of us whatever is your area of kingdom whatever it is that god you are doing god will make you a king in that in that area na wewe ukienda mbele zangu kama ah ukienda mbele zangu kama alivyokwenda Daudi baba yako kwa ukamilifu wa moyo na kwa adili kufanya hayo yote niliyokuamuru na kuzishika sheria zangu na hukumu zangu ndipo nitakapo ifanya imara kiti chako cha ufalme wako juu ya Israeli milele kama nilivyomwahidia Daudi baba yako nikisema hautakosa kuwa na mtu wa kukaa katika kiti cha enzi cha Israeli ya kwamba basi kama tutapata sheria na maagizo ya Mungu Mungu anaenda kutustawisha sote katika himaya zetu zile ambazo Mungu ametuwekea basi tutatawala na kumiliki kama wafalme milele. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, finally I just want to do a small thing. Um, when Moses uh, was dedicating the temple or rather the tabernacle, the Bible says that he anointed every piece of furniture in the house of the Lord. Maandiko uh, anasema wakati alipokuwa akiweka wakfu a uh, nyumba ya bwana alipaka mafuta kila chombo ambacho kilikuwa kwa katika nyumba ya bwana yeah. obviously i can't do that i'm not going to go every piece of furniture and touch everything bila shaka mnajua siwezi kugusa kila kisehemu cha chombo kilichoko hapa what i'm going to do however is i get a little anointing in my hands and just throw it in the air and believe god sanctify everything inside here. Na kile nitakachofanya nitachukua mafuta mikononi mwangu na kutupa hewani na kumwamini Mungu kwamba anatakasa kila chombo mahali hapa. Father in Jesus name. Baba kwa jina la Yesu. As Moses sanctified the piece of furniture in the tabernacle of Moses. Kama Musa alivyoweka wakfu na kutakasa kila chombo katika hema ile la Musa. And these pieces of furniture in his house. Na nena ta kasa sehemu hizi za vyombo katika nyumba hii kuvitakasa kwa matumizi yako ya Mungu na kuziweka wakfu kwako kama vyombo vitakatifu kwa ajili ya Bwana kwa jina la Yesu hili nafanya kwa jina la Baba la Mwana na Roho Mtakatifu amen
Wazee wa madabao haya Mashemansi wa kike na wa kiume pia Mashemansi wa kike na wa kiume pia Tumwabudu Bwana wakati tunapoendelea. Praise the Lord. Every altar has priests who minister to that altar. And it, oh, sorry, we, we haven't prayed for come. Come, come quickly. Oh dear. I forgot all about them. Oh, Be worshiping the Lord. Be worshiping the Lord. Let's be worship. Music team, music team, just lead in worship. Continue leading worship. Oh, Ooh. 
Nataka kumshukuru Mungu kwa wakati wa ajabu ambao Mungu ametupa. Tumefikia hatima ya kuweka wakfu nyumba hii ya Bwana. Now but enough kama 5 minutes all of you let us stand. Amen. Tusimame tu, tu, tu kwa dakika tano ama sio tano kama dakika tatu jihoji mwenyewe jipeleleze kuna mambo ambayo unajua dhahiri kwamba haya ni mabaya na ulifanya yaachilie mwambie Mungu nisamee kwa hiyo pole pole tu amen Bwana Yesu asifiwe pole pole tu ndopatie nafasi hiyo umwambie Bwana hii siwezi kwa akili yangu siwezi kwa mtu yote ananiambia lakini hii ni kosa hata sisi sema mbele ya watu hapa Bwana naomba unitakase kutoka moyoni amen kwa uweza wangu bwana mimi siwezi bila wewe bwana kweli siwezi kwa nguvu zangu bwana mimi siwezi bila wewe bwana siwe oni naomba niongoze kweli e bwana popote ni enda po kweli hata siku hiyo ya mwisho tajiro nipa kwa maneno yako kwa kinywa chako mwenyewe just jiombe tu jiombe tu jitakase tu jitakase tu father in the name give you some two minutes jihoji mwenyewe mwambie Mungu akusaidia kusamee mpaka ujisikie mwenyewe una uhuru wa kuchukua meza ya Bwana Okay, it's okay. I want to believe God has heard what you have said and because he is a God of mercy, he has forgiven you and I want to believe you are ready now. But kama una condemnation, it's rather si vizuri utumie kama bado hujasikia breakthrough. So with all humility, I'd love to call my wife aje hapa because uh, it may pay Monday to na na wazazi tufanye hii meza. Come here Sister Helen, alafu na ndugu zangu wawili wakubwa ambao tutakuja tufanye nao kazi hapa. Eh, Pastor Moshe, Pastor Kesi, where are you? Can you come over here? Tusaidiane. Pastor Silas Kesi and your wives please. Come and help us. Pastor Kesi and your wife, Pastor Moshe and your wife come here so that we can do this work together. And uh, I think I'll be going to to use or some of them here. Okay. Okay. Sasa naomba tuweze ku Is there in a washing of hands? So you can come here. Now, tunarudi pale pale kwa maandiko. Hapo sura ile ya 
moja kitabu hicho cha wa Korintho kwanza mstari ule wa 23 Biblia inasema kwamba eh, naye akisha kushukuru mstari wa 24 akaumega akasema hmm, huu ndio mwili wangu ulio kwa ajili yenu fanyeni hivi kwa ukumbusho wangu Bwana Yesu asifiwe I think you can sit now you can get seated brethren I'm sorry to hold you for so long Now ningeomba Pastor Moshe sijui uko wapi my brother come and pray for the bread just hold it first just pray for it first For the name of Jesus I want to say thank you for this symbol as we partake of it Lord let it be a blessing unto each one of us to own glory and honor in Jesus name amen amen then inaendelea hapo ya kwamba um, naye akisha kushukuru akaumega okay tuende verse 25 na vivi hivi baada ya kula akakitoa kikombe akisema kikombe hiki ni agano jipya katika damu yangu fanyeni hivi kila mnyopo kwa ukumbusho wangu nitamwomba pastor Silas Kesi ndugu yangu aje aombe kikombe hiki love then we shall do the rest as we continue just pray for this brother our father and our god we want to thank you we want to bless your name because of thy salvation in our lives we especially thank you for the blood that was shed at the cross for the remission of our very sins this time oh god almighty we thank you for this blood and as we partake oh god of this cup we pray oh god almighty that lord it shall work afresh in our lives so oh, father cleansing us washing us and making us ready even for your second coming we thank you bless you in jesus name amen amen god bless you so much so the next step now we would like to to start now all of us tutaenda ku kuomba waimbaji watupatie wimbo kidogo tukisafisha mikono yetu alafu tuendelee sasa because we are going to to to, to supply this to people here to give you people and uh, naomba tu waimbaji waanze kuimba na kuendelea kuji hao our levites tuoshe mikono yetu hapo as you see the blood of Jesus oh the blood of Jesus oh the blood of Jesus it was why as a song oh the blood maso hapa Crisco Matate tuweze kupeana especially brother Charo where, where are you Charo and Mutal is Mutal is very busy down there and some come to share oh it washes why thank you for the blood of jesus thank you lord thank you for the thank you lord oh thank you thank you thank you lord thank you for the blood of jesus
lakini mtasimama kwanza kila mmoja ambaye amejihoji kwenye moyo wake ako tayari kuchukua meza ya Bwana na wazee ambao niko nao hapa taita mashemasi ndugu charo na ndugu mko hapo tutachukua ndugu charo tutachukua pande hii no, lakini let me pray first and then na huyo pia ndugu utampatia ndugu mwashako charo utasupply pande ile utachukua tu kikombe na ungojee instruction amen Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Baba katika jina la Yesu na kushukuru kwa sababu mahali tumefika. Naenda tumejifariji kila mmoja wetu kwamba tuko sawa kuchukua meza yako. Naomba Bwana tunapoingia katika kitendo hiki uweze kubariki maisha yetu sawa sawa na ahadi yako. Kwa Yesu Kristo tumeomba na kuamini. Kwa hivyo ningependa tusimame wale ambao mko tayari. Please and then utaletewa kikombe. Okay ndugu huyu ataleta kikombe ni napandile kama uko tayari atakuletea uchukue tu kikombe na usitumie na huyu ndugu atakuja pande hiyo as these brethren are singing chukua tu moja tulafu ngoje nitakupatia maagizo amen otinyo mfrasa si pati patanisho ila damu ya We mawala amani ila damu yake Yesu yashinda uliwe Aisha tutachukua tutachukua 
tuko mkate pia nanyi msafuri ili tupoteze ili tuweze ku I'm sorry I'm sorry kidogo ili tuweze kuomba wakati also I'm sending brethren here walete mkate unachukua kikombe na mkate unakuja alafu usitumie ungoje tule pamoja amen so I'd love the elders to come and uh, pastors to come on wapatia chukua chukua tu hapa wapatia Hakuna kabisa
mind Take my mind Transform it Transform me And my will Take my will Conform it Conform me To yours To yours To yours Oh Lord To yours To yours To yours Ningependa tu kwa ishara tu ya kunyosha mkono kama uko hapa na labda hujapata kikombe ama hujapata mkate ama labda yani huja hujahudumiwa kwa sababu tunataka tuwe in unity na hawa wamepata so can you can you can i just uh, continue sir Haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So, ningetaka tu ni naomba kama mko hapa na kila mtu yuko na na, na, na kikombe na mkate umeshikilia. Tafute instruction. Tuwe kitu kimoja. Aku nak
Nashukuru kwa patience yenu. Ningependa sasa tuweze kutumia kwa pamoja. Tutaanza na kutumia mkate. Tunyo kikombe. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, thank you so much. I think we are through now. Kwa meza ya Bwana. Wakati huu ningependa tukurudisha mkutano kwa ndugu yetu ambaye ndugu Charo atachukua kutoka hapo. Kama vile nilivyowatangazia ni kwamba ibada hii ya leo iko sehemu mbili. Mm, tukitoka hapa tunaenda kwa sehemu ya pili ambapo tutakuwa na speeches watu kama wenzetu ambao wametufuata viongozi wetu. But we shall have lunch first. Let let our our programmer give us some praise god bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe amen hakika imekuwa ni siku ya baraka imekuwa siku njema kwa hivyo tunaelekea tamati wa ibada yetu Kwa hivyo ningependa tu nipeane matangazo kwa kifupi hasa kwa wenyeji wa Crisco watate pia wageni tunawalika. Kuanzia kesho asubuhi saa 12 tutakuwa na maombi ya asubuhi yani morning glory. Kwa kuanzia saa 12 hadi saa mbili kasorobo. Hiyo yote itakuwa inaendelea mpaka siku ya Ijumaa na Saturday tutakuwa na choir au praise and worship team itakuwa inakutana kwa ajili ya mazoezi. Kwa hivyo kwa nyenyekevu ningeomba sote tusimame tunapotamatisha ibada yetu kwa neema. Kwa nyenyekevu tusimame sote tafadhali kwa miguu yetu miwili. Vaa barakoa yako vizuri. Angalia mwenzako au jirani yako tunaposema neema ya bwana wetu Yesu Kristo na mapenzi ya Mwenyezi Mungu Baba na ushirika wa Roho Mtakatifu uwe na si sasa na hata milele amen
So karibu elder Mongosa sijui kwa mbona karibu. Pigie mwana makofi anapokuja. Anabia manesha sikiwe. Bwana sikiwe. Amen. Eh ninashukuru sana kwa siku ya leo siku kubwa sana ambaye Mungu ametukusanisha wote wote kwa ajili ya kusherekea ushindi mkubwa ambaye Mungu amesaidia watu wake kujenga nyumba yake. Bwana asifiwe. Mimi nitapenda tu kutoa historia kidogo kuhusu hapa mahali. Wale ambao walijui mimi kwa Bongosa Bongosa mchalo mimi ni mzee hapa ataita na tena kwa neema Mungu mimi ni mzee wa kabisa na Kristo hapo kwa tatu hapa mahali ambapo kuna pakalia wale ambao kwa asubuhi katika ibada tunaeleza kuwa hapa ni katikati ya tatu hadi mahali ambapo kwa tunakaa hapa sasa ni katikati ya mji wa Matate. Na mji wa Matate ni katikati ya kaunti ya Tete Taveta. Bwana asifiwe. Nataka tuanze kupata revelation. Kwa hivyo hii altar hii ambayo imeweka hapa mahali leo imekabidhiwa ime, Mungu. This is a central altar katika Tete Taveta. Bwana asifiwe. Na kabla kanisa kuja hapa kulikuwa na nyumba ya mabati hapa. Hii nyumba ya mabati ilikuwa ni nyumba ya muindi alikuwa anaitwa Fajal Jamal. Hii nyumba ilijengwa kabla First World War. Hii nyumba ya mabati ambayo mlikuwa mnaweka hapa mnaona hapa. Ilijengwa zamani baba yangu aliyezaliwa wakati wa vita na yeye alikuta hapa. Sasa mimi zamani nilikuwa mtoto. Zamani zamani nilikuwa mimi nilikuwa baby zamani. Sasa hivi miaka yangu ni I'm, 19, I'm, I'm, I'm 76 years. Lakini zamani mwisho mwisho wa second world war I was a baby. 1945 1945 kulikuwa na njaa kubwa sana hapa wakati wa vita vinaisha there was a big famine kulikuwa na njaa kubwa sana mahali hapa sehemu hizi za Taita na nadhani karibu nchi yetu ya Kenya kulikuwa na njaa kubwa sana na Fajal Jamal katika nyumba ya mabati ambayo ilikuwa hapa ndio alikuwa ana distribute chakula kwa Taita wote mlimani apart from Voi alikuwa anapeleka chakula bundani taveta all over bwana asifiwe na mali hapa kulikuwa wanauza unga wakati wa vita walikuwa na unga unga wa magunia unga wa magunia ambao ulikuwa ni mchungu mfuko wa yani unga ambao ulikuwa ni very bitter but it was food sasa kina mama kina watu walikuwa na jaa hapa kuja kununua chakula wakati huo mimi nikiwa mtoto wana asifiwe sasa fajali for some reason he was a very compassionate man alikuwa na huruma sana na kina mama wa jamzito na kina mama wenye watoto ambao wanabeba mgongoni akaweka sharia katika duka lake kuwa kina mama ambao ni wajamzito na kina mama ambao wanametoa watoto mgongoni wapatiwe chakula kwanza Bwana asifiwe Sasa mimi naambia nilikuwa baby na mama yangu na kina mama wa chavia walikuwa wanakuja hapa kwa wengi sana Mama anabeba mgongoni anakuja kununua chakula kwa fajali Bwana asifiwe. Sasa mama kwa, kwa njia moja ama nyingine alikuwa anapendana sana na kina mama wa chavia. Basi mimi na, na, na bebo mgongoni na mama anakuja anapata chakula chake kwanza. Alafu anarudi nyuma ananipatia mama mwingine wa kichavia. Alafu yule mama anakuja anapata chakula anarudi nyuma tena ananipatia mwingine. So I'm talking about this place. Naongea kuhusu mali hapa in 
Mimi nilikuwa nalisha akina mama akichabia chakula hapa. Haleluya. Sasa naambia nipendwe sana kina mama. Hata mkiwa nakuwa nilikuwa napendwa sana kina mama huko juu. Neno Mungu linasema nitafanya jambo kubwa kwa wakati wako kama nikikuambia sasa utaamini. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Sasa 1945 wakati nilikuwa nalisha kina mama chakula nikiwa bebi kama wakati ule Mungu angesema huyu mtoto huyu ndio atanunua hapa mahali hakuna mtu ambaye angekubali. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Sasa mimi nikakuwa nikaenda zangu nikafanya shughuli zangu baadaye hawa wahindi ambao walikuwa hapa walijenga na hapa pia na hii plot yote ilikuwa ni yao pako chini wakataka kuuza hapa mahali alafu wakasema hawa ambao walikuwa wamebaki wakasema waliambiwa na baba yao Fajali mzee Fajali alikuwa alikufa kitambo lakini watoto wake wakasema baba alisema hii plot ni lazima tuuzie mchabia mpaka tuuzie mtaita lakini mchabia kwa sababu walisema kuwa wakati wachabia na kuwa hapa walikuwa analeta mahindi yao hapa walikuwa analeta pilipili walileta mbono walisema alikuwa ametajirishwa na wachabia sasa watu walikuja wengi sana kutoka mahali kila mahali kununua mahali hapa lakini hawa hindi wakasema pana mpaka tutafute mchabia aje kununua hapa mahali bwana asifiwe sasa wakati huo ndio babangu alikuwa ile nyumba pili huko na mheshimiwa Elid Mwakio ndiye alikuwa mbunge wa Mwatate. Alafu akaenda kwa mzee na mzee akatafuta Elid. Elid akasema wacha tuulize ndugu zangu. Bwana asifiwe. Kwa bahati aliponiuliza kwa hii nanunua hapa mahali. Tukaanza tuka negotiate na Wahindi, alafu nikanunua hapa mahali. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Sasa mimi mimi nilikuwa sijaokoka na tukaanza biashara hapa tukachukua biashara hii hi, eh, premise zao tukamna pamoja na biashara lakini tulianza biashara tu kienyeji tukaja hata kuomba hata baba yetu aliye mbinguni atukuomba bwana asifiwe tukafanya biashara hapa ikaanguka kwa sababu hatumkabidhi Mungu na hizi biashara hapa zilikuwa zinaendeshwa na mapepo praise god alafu zikaanguka kabisa mimi nikawa chini kabisa kabisa haleluya alafu katika harakati za kufanya biashara na nini nikanunua shamba Mazeras. Na mke wangu akatu mke wangu alikuwa ameokoka Crisco akawa anaenda Mombasa kanisani kwa mama pamoja presbyter Nzinga pamoja na mama na walikuwa wakati mwingine walikuwa wanafuga kuku. Sasa wakawa wanakuja pale shambani wakati fulani kwa fellowship. Bwana asifiwe. Siku moja presbyter akija Mazeras mimi sijaokoka nilikuwa nakunywa pombe zangu na nini lakini akija tu tunaongea tu. Tunaongea tu. Alafu siku moja tukiongea tunatembea tu tunaongea na mimi. Akaniambia unajua bwana Bongosa wakati huo zamani nilikusikia mzee sana. Haleluya. Akasema unajua kwa Mungu kuna kila kitu in salvation there is everything available. God is a provider provides everything. Lakini nikamwambia wacha wakati wakati mimi nilikuwa mtu wa pesa nyingi nyingi sasa. Nikamwambia lakini presbyter Unasema kuwa katika salvation there is everything. Na mimi kwa observation yangu mimi kama bongosa nikiobserve watu ambao wameokoka na nikizama watu ambao hawajaokoka naona matajiri wengi hapa Mombasa ni Wahindi, matajiri wengi ni Waarabu ambao hawajaokoka. Miungu yao si Mungu ambao unasema. Kwa nini wao wanatajirika na wokovu na waona ni maskini? Bwana asifiwe. Yeye anakata ni kwa zama kina mama hapa nyumbani wameokoka tukutendeza lakini they look so miserable they look so the poor poor Alafu kaniambia nataka ni shushai tunataka kwa kwa because of this place Akaniambia unajua Mungu ni Mungu wa kanuni He is a God of principles Ukifuata kanuni za Mungu they apply universally Akaniambia sasa unajua kanuni moja kubwa ya Mungu kubariki watu na pesa na prosperity ni kumtolea. Kutoa mali zako, kutoa kumtumikia Mungu, unamtolea Mungu alafu anakubariki. Alafu akasema shida kubwa ya watu ambao ni wa Kristo 
hawafuati hiyo principle shida kubwa ya watu ambao wameokoka na wengine ni wakristo hawafuati hiyo kanuni ya kumtolea Mungu Bwana sifie sasa mimi tukaongea alafu alafu kanambia lakini hiyo kanuni pia shetani amefundisha wafasi wake Bwana sifie akaniambia kwa shetani amefundisha wafasi wake na wale wengine ambao wanafuata miungu mingine wamefundishwa na dini zao kutolea Mungu wao Bwana sifie alafu kanambia unajua haya majengo makubwa makubwa hapa Mombasa watu wametoa sana makafara kwa, kwa miungu yao wanabarikiwa lakini hizo baraka hazina Bwana sifie hizo baraka zao hazina hazina utulio hazina blessings yani blessings lakini zina shida nyingi Bwana sifie alafu kanambia blessings za Mungu hazina matatizo hazina shida blessings za Mungu unakana unakana starehe unapumzika unakuwa na utulivu haleluya Bwana Yesu asifiwe alafu baadaye nikarudi hapa nyumbani nirudi nyumbani kwa sababu nilikuwa mimi nilikuwa na distribute beer I was a big beer distributor hapa Taita nzima taita nzima kodi nilikuwa na nilikuwa napeleka pombe. Yaani nilikuwa mtu mkubwa ule mwanguni hapa Taita eh. Wale ambao walinjua zamani. Walikuwa wanaita Mr B. Hata ukisikia Mr B nilikuwa mtu mkubwa sana. Lakini nilikuwa sijaokoka. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So I was distributing beer in the whole of um, uko kote Taveta uko kote nilikuwa na nauza beer. Alafu nilipokuwa madhara kidogo biashara ikaribika huko kwa sababu ya kaya bombo ikao uwezi kuuza nyama uwezi kuuza maziwa uwezi kuuza kuku nilikuwa nafunga kuku huko alafu nikaja hapa nyumbani bwana asifiwe nilipokuja nyumbani nikaa kaa na uza bia pakilo wakati alafu siku moja asubuhi pastor wadu na pastor ibrahim wakatua alikuwa krisko wakaja pale nilikuwa na ofisi hapo juu ya kuuza pombe asubuhi wakaja wametoka morning glory ametoka boni glory wakaja paka wakaniambia mzee Bongosa tunataka tukodeshe hili banda lako hili la, la mabati hapa hili nyumba ambayo ilikuwa hapa ilikuwa ni store what is here ilikuwa store hapa tulikuwa tunafanya biashara ya nyumba nyingine akasema kwa sababu hii store tunaona kama hamitumii tunaomba utukodeshe tu tunakulipa rent haleluya pastor wadu na pastor Ibrahim Ibrahim wakati alikuwa ni mzee na, na pastor Wadu alikuwa pia ni mzee wa kanisa alikuwa hajakuwa pastor sasa waliponiuliza hivyo alafu immediately nikakumbuka president Zinga alivyosema anasema kuwa kanuni ya Mungu kubariki watu ni kutoa vitu vyao Bwana asifiwe sasa nilipofikiria hivyo nilipokumbuka hiyo nikamwambia pastor Wadu chukue mtu mfanye kazi akaniambia tutakulipa vipi nikamwambia pana na wapatia tu bure Bwana asifiwe. Sasa mimi sijaokoka. Watu wa kanisa wamekuja nikawaambia chukweni mfanye kazi. Haleluya. Sasa baadaye wakaza ku wakageuza hii, wakasafisha, wakafanya kuwa kanisa. Lakini kumbe walipokuja wakaja wakashauriana, waliniambia baadaye. Wakaja kushauriana hapa wakasema jamani huyu mtu hajaokoka. Na yeye ametupatia hii nyumba bure. Situmuombee. Haleluya. Sasa hao watu kanisani wakafunga na kuniombea kila morning glory wanakuja naomba wanaomba wanandai. Bwana asifiwe. Haleluya. Alafu siku moja siku moja nikiwa nikiwa dukani pale la bia nikaita mke wangu kama sasa ni hivi. Yaani nilikuwa sijui kwa nini mke wangu nikamwambia kutoka leo hii biashara bia tunaifunga. Na biashara Bia stores meja bia nimeombe tu nimeamua hii biashara naifunga mama kanitazama akasema are you right nikamwambia niko sawa sawa kabisa kwa nini unataka kufunga nikamwambia naona tu naona tu tuifunge and I, i can't even reason why i did that bwana asifiwe tumeongea hivyo about half an hour later watu wa Kenya brewers wakaja kutoka voi walikuwa na walikuwa na ofisi zao kubwa voi wakaja watate wanataka ni wapatie crest and kufanya advertisement wakaanza nikamwambia jamani fanye nini nimeamua hii biashara naifunga wasema mzee bongo umekuwa na kishaa 
Watu wanapigania hii biashara wewe kwa sababu unajulikana Nairobi ndio umepatiwa hiyo na unasema unaifunga. Are you are you okay? Wana sphere. Nikamwambia tu I've decided to to, to close it. Sasa wakasema kutoka sasa nilikuwa nilikuwa nimechukua overdraft nyingi sana hapa. Overdraft ya biashara yangu zilikuwa guarantee na Kenya Breweries because of the DRB distribution. Akasema sasa kama utaki wakapiga simu zao Nairobi. Wakaambia huyo mzee kama hataki mwambieni sasa hiyo overdraft pia tunafanya nini? Try cancel. Wana sphere. So Bia zikabaki pale nikamwambia achukue akasema atukulipi kama nataka uze mwenyewe. So zingine tuliuza na zingine tukanywa na marafiki zangu mpaka zikaisha. Haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Lakini sasa from that time biashara rangi zangu zote zikaanguka na mimi sijaokoka wakati huo. Lakini nyumba nimepatia nani? Nyumba nimempatia Mungu. Bwana asifiwe. Sasa ndio biashara kwa sababu kwa sababu overdraft imeenda. Nilikuwa nauza mafuta hapa yakaenda, nilikuwa na duka hapa likafungwa. Haleluya. Lakini bahati kwa bahati kwa bahati nzuri kwa neema ya Mungu, watumishi wa Mungu wakiwa nafunga na kunombea, nikaja nikaokoka. Haleluya. Bwana yasifiwe. Sasa nilipookoka nilikuwa nasoma nilikuwa nasoma po Anglican. Nikaona I was not satisfied with what I was getting. Lakini kwa bahati nilikuwa nilikuwa naongea sana na watumishi wa Mungu kutoka Kristo kwa nilikuwa nakuja kila wakati hapa. Alafu one time I decided to come here. I decided to come so that I can know God more, so that I can be taught. What is fear? Na nilipokuja hapa nilikuja na I, I, I don't know I, I, I came with a lot of um, power. Yaani nilikuwa nilikuja tu ku, ku, kuingia. Nikalia sana. Yaani mimi nikiwa mzee nikalia sana mpaka nisani. Bwana asifiwe. Like from that time nikaona sasa Mungu mwenyewe ana ana ananinua. Ndio baadaye tukashauriana na familia yangu mimi na mke wangu na watoto wangu tukashauri sote. Tukashauriana nikamwambia naona hii hii plot tumpatie Mungu. Bwana asifiwe. Sasa tulipokubaliana sote tukaja kwa pastor tukamweleza tukaandika barua kwa hii portion ya kanisa tunampatia Mungu. I don't want to thank God. Wapendwa waambie kitu kimoja you can never go wrong by giving to God. Bwana asifiwe. And I want to tell you one thing also. You can never overgive God. Uwezi kumpatia Mungu kwa kusema nimempatia Mungu ya kutosha. Bwana asifiwe. So wapendwa mkiona hii nyumba inakaa namna hiyo ndio historia yake. Mimi nikiwa mdogo nilipewa mamangu alinipatia kwa kwa kina mama wa kichawia. My, my mother gave me to, to other women to be blessed so as a blessing then God blessed me by getting this place kumbe ilikuwa madhumuni yake ni madhabahu ya Mungu kuja kukuwa hapa taita taveta katikati as a central altar Mungu awabariki sana What a wonderful story Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa hivyo tujifunze kutoka hapo Amen Oh, it's a testimony sorry it's a testimony basi uh, powerful one ninaomba tu nimuite kaka yangu mkubwa basare Leonard Mcharo karibu pamoja na mre, na mke wako <laughs> jamani tu washangilie tu kwa makofi yanapokuja Haleluya. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana ukaso. Leo nimefurahi sana. Ati pastor Odu, yeye pastor Odu ananifurahisha sana. He taught me how to pray for my wife. Aliniambia mkikosana na mke wako usiombe ukiomba uhakikisha nasikia. Bwana Mungu unajua huyu mke nampenda. Eh, Amenikasirikia lakini unajua roho yangu ilipo. <laughs> Sasa leo nimesikia akisema at kabla baba yake na mama yake hawajaoana. Kuna kitu walikuwa wamepangiwa. Najifunza whoever finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor from the Lord. Mimi naitwa Leonard Mcharo. 
nimeokoka na mpenda Yesu and i have a wife of noble character yeah Barasifiwe. Um hata mimi naitwa Emily Mcharo pia mimi nimeokoka na mpenda Yesu. But I think I think my joy is to hear him say those words. I think for me yeah. Yeah. I think more than anything I think um those are the greatest words he has said in his entire life. Yeah. Asante sana. Anajua an, an, anavyosema because um, when I was young niliokoka nikiwa mdogo. Eh, miaka 16. And then as I grew nikakutana naye alikuepo tu nikamsukuma kanisani vizuri alafu mimi nikaanza kwenda. And for 22 years, 22 years she just prayed for me. Akasimama na mimi, akaniombea, akaniombea mpaka Yesu akaniita akaya kaita kabisa saa saba usiku nikamtumia mzee Messi nikamwambia eh hey, bwana kule niliko nimeshindwa nimerudi so i really thank god uh, for for his goodness kwa kweli leo ni ni siku njema kuna wimbo unasema leo ni siku njema tumemuona bwana hii imekuwa ni site mahali pachafu for the last uh, 5 months tumekuwa hapa na watu wangu tukifanya mambo but god kwa kweli amefanya mambo ya ajabu na tunamshukuru niko na mengi ya kusema kwa nini tumefika hapa but um, kwa ufupi tu ni kwamba um, kule utokako Na vile ulivyo lelewa, I think it has a great influence on who you become. Memsikia mzee akiongea hapa. About uh, mzee hapa nikiangalia wametoa sehemu ya shamba, shambani huko wametoa sehemu kidogo kwa kanisani, mazeras walikuwa meto. So nafikiri ni mbegu walikuwa wamepanda. Sasa ndivyo tunavyojua. Mke wangu kwao the same thing. Mama na eneo kubwa katoa one area to be inaitwa Bethel Prayer Mountain mali kunaitwa Soi karibu na um, karibu na Kitale and there is a big church on the prop nyumbani tunaenda nyumbani na hapo ni kanisani mnaenda nyumbani watu wamejaa mnaenda shambani mnakuta na watu wanaomba huko wamekaa chini ya miti wamelala wana mlilia Mungu so i think somehow her family and my family kuna kitu Mungu ameweka kwa sababu zake yeye mwenyewe Na um, mama mkubwa upande upande wa mama sasa sorry i'm the one who talks a lot sasa ndio na namuongelea kwa niaba yake um alifariki kabla ku, alijenga the, the the prayer center but he did she did not get to build the sanctuary but it was her dream kwamba hata akifariki angependa kanisa alifanya nini lijengwe that was about 3 years ago 2016 yeah when she gave uh, that directive last year tukaenda huko nikapata kanisa limesimama yani ilikuwa ni ajabu kweli maki hakuna hakuna mchungaji hakuna yule patron mwenyewe hayuko so nikauliza shemeji zangu how did this happen ambia mtu anakuja tu anatoa mawe mwingine anakuja anatoa cement mwingine anakuja anatoa hiki mwingine anatoa glass mwingine yani kila mtu ana anafanya tu na nyumba imesima imesimama Hapo hapo nikamtumia mke wangu message. This was June. Yeah. June last year. Kaambia tutafanya kamchango ketu hapa. But eh, kanisa nyumbani pia tujenge. Unaonaje? Ambia sawa. Je, sasa mambo mengine ukimwambia mke wako unaangoja wacha tukae tuongee because ye ni mtu wa finance. Eh yes, sasa kila kitu mpaka sema ngoja kwanza wacha tupige hesabu tuangalie tuone itakuwa namna gani akasema tu sawa. So I, I really thank God for that. Alafu Ikafika wakati nikaambia ndugu yangu fulani hapa I will introduce him just now. Kaambia bwana mimi naenda nyumbani mwezi mwezi wa 8 huu. Mwambie mwezi wa 9 nitaenda nyumbani. Nitaenda kufanya marekebisho ya nyumba mzee na pia nitajenga kwangu. Lakini naona huu ndio wakati wa kujenga ile kanisa. Lakini sijamwambia mke wangu maana unajua watu wamehesabu walivyo hao. Aambia ndugu you do what your heart feels. 
Wewe Mungu atakufungulia nji atakufungulia njia. So was coming here on a Wednesday nafikiri tarehe tatu. So the Saturday before tulikuwa tumeenda ile exercise ya asubuhi na mke wangu tukiongea na tukimpa tuki mwili exercise. Nikamwambia bwana naenda but um, I think this is the time to build the church. Akasema sawa. Now <laughs> Pengine hamuelewi kupata hilo neno sawa <laughs> from my wife especially if it involves uh, big things it's difficult but for this somehow alif, alifanya tu wakaniuliza wa jamaa budget vipi nikawaambia ikapita 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 but they supported me na nikisimama hapa ama tukisimama hapa hatusimami sisi kivyetu peke yetu tuko na team maiki wengine wameshangaa wewe umekaa hapa miezi mitano kazi inaendeleaje wengine wameenda but they are the men savorites please come gentlemen so we we have a company it's it's fairly big tunajenga apartments za kuuza but within that company karibu sana Within that company I have men. These four men. How and you like my council of elders. Tunajiita clock builders. Clock builders kwa sababu gani? Naweza kuja hapa mwatate na mimi ndio mjuzi wa time. Nianze kuambia kila mtu sasa ngapi? Saa saba. Yaani I'm the only one who knows the time. Nitaonekana mtu mkubwa sana. But what if I learned how to build clocks? Ukijifunza kutengeneza saa everybody can know the time. Sasa sisi we are learning to build clocks so that we can enable everybody else to rise in leadership. Yeah. So hawa ndio wanaume wanaoni wanao to support na hawa ndio wamehakikisha pamoja na wenzao kwamba hata nikiwepo hapa kampuni inaendelea, kampuni imesimama hata ku organize materials na labor na payments na budgets na kila kitu cha hapa ni hawa wanaume. Huyu <laughs> bwana anaitwa Ebu Jiongi just introduce yourself quickly and then brother Musioki you introduce yourself last and say a word. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa majina anaitwa Joseph Mwenda. Uh, tunafanya savo na nashukuru Mungu kuwepo hapa I'm humbled. May God bless you. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Eh mimi naitwa Isaac Mwamburi Kelemi. Eh mimi ni mtaita lakini mmeru pia. <laughs> Sijui kama mmeisikia mtu kama huyo. Uh, mara ya mwisho ambaye nilikuwa hapa ni miaka 25 iliyopita. Mama yangu ametoka Mbololo juu hapa. Nilimwambia ni juu hapa. So nilikuwa mtoto mdogo sana sikuweza sikuweza kukumbuka ni wapi. Yeah, so nafanya pia na Savo idara ya mauzo na nimefurahi sana kuwa hapa baada ya miaka 25 na kwa hii kazi ambayo tumefanya. Uh, leo nimesoma mambo mengi sana kwa mhubiri na asanteni hunga dela kwa bariki. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. My name is Ilari Bore. Yeah, I work with Savo. Uhuru wa Yesu. Ah, bwana asifiwe. Mimi ni Njonda ni Musioki. Ni wangapi wananijua? <laughs> uh, I'm very much humbled to be in this place. Um, I was here back 2016 March. Wakati tulikuwa tunaweka foundation. Uh, first and foremost, we came here to witness the God's doing dile ile kasi imefanyika hapa is not because of our mighty it is because of the god who reigns bwana yesu asifiwe um niko na furaha kuona kwamba after a long time the prayers you have been praying has now come to reality and i believe then the population the congregants the number of congregants then and now is unimaginable bwana yesu ameweza kuwainua na atendelea kuwainua 
tena zaidi kwa kiwango kikubwa um, we were operating behind the scene uh, wakati ule i came here personally but my brother told me that i'll be there i mean i kwambia i'll be operating behind the scene i came here uh, several two times uh, three times the, the time we came here to to understand the logistics and they came here twice again to also see the progress of the projects we had three projects so i was the one the one man was behind whatever was happening and we thank god for everything and we are looking forward for better relationships uh, as you grow we grow together and you pray for us as a company um, we are in charge of construction we normally build so tumechanganyikana but niko hiyo part ya kujenga wakati tuko kule mtuombe sana anaamini kwamba Mungu ataweza kubariki sisi wote barikiwe na Mungu awazidishie neema zake asante sana finally kuna bwana mmoja hapa ningeomba tumpigie makofi makubwa sana huyu bwana anaitwa Nicodemus Kioko ule msingi wa kwanza ulipojengwa Musioki alikuwa ndio foreman Musioki and I go we we took a story ndefu sana na huyu bwana alikuwa ni fundi sasa amekuja akawa ndio foreman ndio amesimamia hii kazi mpaka imefika hapo <laughs> very shy man mkiona hapa mbele kuna box na ziko na vitu vizuri hapa ndani kwa hivyo nataka kumkaribisha mami akuja endelee na hii shughuli we've had a history of where this has come from and indeed we want to say a very big thank you to god and also say a very big thank you to the vessels that god has used to cause this to be indeed all the glory and honor belongs to him and, and we appreciate that there's a history and a history that god began even before understanding was there as El Mosa has just told us so today we are celebrating one the church but we also have a special celebration. Tuna celebration ya 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 nini? Malum. Yeah. Tun Yeah, tuna tuna Taongea ah. kizungu. So today we are celebrating the birth of the pastor of Crisco Mwatate Church. A baby has been born. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear pastor. Happy birthday to you. A dude's birthday. History is still being made. I think last week on Friday was Mama Wadu's birthday. Wow, same month, different years, eh? Okay. So I will first ask Pastor Wadu to come and his wife, and they will cut this cake for us. I don't know where the bucket of water is. A baby has to be. So um, come this side. This side. So Mama Wadu to chikua kisu. We're doing this um, quickly, so we will leave out quite a number of things. So together, they will cut the cake. It's not a wedding, it's a birthday, so... There we are, there goes the cake. Happy birthday, Pastor Simon and Helen Wadu. All right, so we will leave it at that. We will continue afterwards, all right? And then we come here. And this is Crisco Church Mwatate. And so we are cutting this cake. Again, they will cut the cake and I think I'll ask the presbyter to come. And I think I also want to ask the baby who was a blessing to the mothers. Can you please come, Elder Bongosa? <laughs> the reason for why we are here today. He could have refused and said, I mean, those are old people's stories. But he, he has been obedient to the living God. So, um, we'll ask the presbyter to take the knife. But here, yeah, yeah. As, as um, the, the senior priest in this altar, 
Elder Bongosa and Pastor Wadu, you put your hand there. Where is Mama Bongosa? Yeah, come, come also. Eh? Yeah, put your hand there. Together they will cut. Sister Bongosa, where is she? Yeah, she'll also come. And... Leonard and your wife, please come. You, you guys have also played a major role in this being, and you will represent the men who work around you and the people who have stood by you and with you. So you can just put your hand maybe on mama's shoulder since you can't reach here. Yeah. You can put your hand on that. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we're cutting the cake in Jesus' name, celebrating the commemoration of this great building. Hallelujah. God is good and he remains good all the time. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Amen. God bless you. Forty-two, ya kwamba inapendeza watu kudumu pamoja, tuki umega huu mkate, na tuki kula chakula chetu pamoja. Okay. Okay. Simame nyo papa. Alo, buwana yesu wa sifiwe. Ninashukua nafasi hii kwa hea makubwa kuheshimu uwepo wa kiongozi wetu hapa mtaita na si mwingine bali ni deputy governor ni vizuri tuweze kuheshimu uwepo wake hapa amekuwa nasi tangu asubuhi na ni mtu wa shughuli nyingi ningependa tumpatie nafasi aongee kidogo kabla wazazi wetu hajaenda ni karibu sana e, mpigeni bwana makofi anafa na kuja Asante sana pastor Wadu bwana asifiwe Wana sifiwe tena na furaha kubwa 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 sana kwa ndani ya kanisa hili. Tarehe ya uh, uh, 9 mwezi wa August 20, 2017 tulipopata cheti chetu cha kusema kwamba tumepata ushindi wa governor na deputy governor wa county ya Taita Taveta tuliingia hapa. Usiku saa moja, saa mbili hivi tulingea hapa na nafikiri wakati huo madhabahu yalikuwa kule na tukapiga tuka magoti kule na ukatutakasa na nafikiri yale maombi ulitoombea wakati ule mpaka sasa ndio yanatushikilia nyinyi ndio mlikuwa wa kwanza you were the first to anoint us as we were getting into this very very difficult but blessed work that we've been given by god and i'm truly honored to stand in such a beautiful church nani amekuwa kitafuta ac kama mimi mimi nimeitafuta kabisa because i am so surprised that in a church that is in watate in the middle of june the hottest season muda ambapo huwa tuna sote tu tukitembea ni jasho pekee lakini hapa hakuna ac hakuna fan na tuko sawa yani hiyo ni maajabu kumaanisha jengo hili ni la kipekee. Rafiki yangu mcharo, congratulations. Koi you vast, you don't understand why you're getting the unmerited grace. It is because of this. It is the pastor said the presbyter, sorry, um, said when you build a church. That was what we've been given as the word of the Lord today. When your hands and heart go towards giving God his temples then everything in your world is opened up and i hope that we can all learn that lesson from today that wherever it is that we give to the altar of god then everything in our lives is opened up and i believe what was prophesied here on this stage earlier on that this is a new dawn for mwatate is coming to be seen we in the center of mwatate hii naipenda kuita main street yetu ambapo kila kitu kinafanyika hapa biashara kubwa kubwa za madini zinafanyika hapa wale ambao wanauza mashamba yao wako hapa hapa store zote ziko hapa hapa hivi mmebadilisha sura ya mwatate tumesema ni municipality ni, ni kiti cha kiongozi uongozi katika kaunti yetu na sasa tunaanza kuona sura mpya ambayo inaleta ladha katika kaunti yetu ya Taita so for what has been prayed for today 
let all of the challenges that we've been experiencing as county citizens, whether it is land issues, tumekuwa na shida ya mashamba mengi sana hapa. Whether it is issues of being able to get the re- benefit from our resources, madini yetu yote yafunguke kwa sababu tumejileta mbele za Mungu na tatuonekania akijua kwamba sisi ni watoto wake. Hivi mimi naona kwamba taita taveta tumebarikiwa. Katika miezi mitatu tumeona makanisa matatu makubwa kama haya yakifunguliwa. And truly if divine altars are placed everywhere in this great county then surely we must prosper. So for those few words I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you very much for supporting this baby here. Nadam vanga baba this is my grandfather. So but lin kwa buya mwana. We 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 truly truly thank you for the support that you have given him in being able to raise this church to where it is today. 20 25 years is not a joke. It is something that we can see as a testament to faith and commitment. And to Abobongosa Church, without you and your grace of being able to give what you have given, we also would not have seen this. We thank you very much for your generosity and what you have done for this county. As we live here today, let us remember that it is also up to us to continue this legacy, to continue praising and praying to God that he keeps us in his grace that whatever it is that we do with the work of our hands it is all for his glory because without that then we will turn to be like the pharisees of Matthew 23 where we're getting into temples where we are not we are listening to God's word but not applying it as action in our lives so as we go home let us think deeply what are his responsibilities as a citizens vile tunafaa kufanya kama wakazi wa Taita Taveta na kama jamii ya Mungu kuhakikisha kwamba tunamtukuza Bwana kila siku na wakati wote kwa maisha zetu zote asanteni na barikiweni na poleni kwa kukatiza keki hii ambayo iko hapa mbele yenu mama baba hapo sana chafcha na job kile ambacho mmekiandaa mbele yetu kitatukuza Mungu pia na tutakuwa na raha ambayo hatu hata hatuitambui asanteni na asanteni sana barikiweni nikiketi na jo sijasema jina langu jina langu ni Majala Mlagui na kwa neema ya Mungu mimi ndio naibu wa pili wa, wa county yetu ya Taita Taveta karibuni wageni na mkisafiri muende na baraka za Mungu asanteni Thank you so much our deputy governor. Now I want to take this opportunity to pray for our leaders who are now traveling to Mombasa and it's good to pray for them for safe journey. They have been a blessing to us. We thank you so much mom and dad for what you have done. Let's pray as we commit them to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for the beautiful work you have done through your ministers, oh God. They have been a blessing to us we have received them as your servants oh god and according to your word in Matthew chapter 10 you have promised that whoever receives your servants receives your son Jesus and whoever receives your son Jesus receives you god we know we have been we have received blessings from you we commit them unto you we bind the spirits of accidents on the way give them proper judgment of the road as they drive Lord as they reach home safely and we get to know that we shall be careful to thank you we pray all this believing in Jesus name amen, amen.